This program is brought to you by the Genesis Communications Network, a world leader in talk radio since 1998. Visit GCNlive.com today. The gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Chris O'Brien is running a little late. He's back home from, believe it or not, a little bit later we'll also be hearing from one of our famed forum moderators. That sounds really positive. Gogs Mackay, who will be reporting in from his palatial estate or shack in Scotland. Of course, last week when we had Bob Zanotti good friend of mine, a former paranormal radio broadcaster on the show. We had Gogs as the guest co-host. But this week, we welcome back someone who was on the show back in 2013, probably not long after he took on his post as the, what do they call it, executive director of the Mutual UFO Network, MUFON. Now, I've heard the post refer to as director, international director, and executive director. Is that a difference without a distinction? Well, actually, back in about 2012, the then current international director, Dave McDonald, came to the board and said he'd like to change the title from international director to executive director to be more in line with what other nonprofits call their lead, you know, executive. So we went ahead and just voted to make it executive director. I actually like the international director better. It sounds bigger. (laughs) It sounds more famous. You know, executive is somebody who sits in an office. Yeah. But international director. I mean, that's tremendous. It sounds like you're a world traveler. But are you a world traveler? Does MUFON have lots of members outside the U.S.? Well, we actually do. We have uh, well over 600 members worldwide. We operate in 43 countries as well as all 50 states. And uh, just uh, just because you brought that up, I'll be traveling to Brazil in two weeks to speak at uh, A.J. Gavard's conference down there. Uh, I believe it's Igazo Falls or something to that effect. Um, I've never been there. It's called the Niagara Falls of the South America. Um, but it's going to be quite a big conference that he runs every year. And it was nice enough to invite me to come down and present the uh, MUFON story. AJ's been on the PowerCast on several occasions. We always have a lot of fun talking to him. That sounds great. How do you work in concert with the organizations in other parts of the world? Well, actually, uh, AJ, for a number of years, was a national director for MUFON. I mean, we work, I think, fairly well with them. Um, There's obviously lots of small uh, UFO groups. Uh, AJ happens to run a a much larger organization that he's been able to create with its own magazine and some of its own things. Um, But basically, we we have a procedures manual for state and national directors. And um, if they sign on to become a national director and run a country, or if they're running a state, uh, they basically have guidelines for how that should be done. So we uh, basically make sure that cases get followed up on, that reports get completed properly, that events are run in a certain way. So um, it's all through a procedures manual that basically keeps things, for, the, for as much as we can, they keep them consistent across the geographies. Now, looking at interest in UFOs around the world, and a lot of people think of it as U.S.-centric, which of course it's not because we've had people associated with organizations around the world. But do you find any particular countries seem to be more into it? Well, right now, uh, Canada has just been going off the charts with us. In fact, one of our best cases came from there this past uh, year, case 74282, which was a dumbbell-shaped craft. Uh, We just uh, put uh, Stu Bundy on our board, who is the assistant national director for Canada. Uh, They've gone gangbusters, and they've recruited almost triple the size of their uh, MUFON membership up there in the last 12 months uh, under his leadership. So, yeah, I mean, the UK, Canada, Australia, generally it's the English-speaking countries, although we're seeing quite a bit of interest in Germany, France, Italy. We, we don't get as much from the Asian countries, China, Japan, and uh, over in that area of the world. I'm not sure why that is, if it's because of a stigma or it's just the language barrier or the written language barrier. I don't, I don't really know. But certainly Europe, South America, and uh, North America are, are well 
represented within MUFON. Now, some years back, I was in touch with somebody from Japan, and this is in the days of snail mail, before we had email and instantaneous transmission. So we're talking here about messages that might have taken a couple of weeks to get to me, even if sent with a pretty quick and expensive delivery method. And there seemed to be a lot of activity there. I had heard reports that there was a lot in China, but again, they're so walled off from the rest of the world, except when they manufacture iPhones and send them to us, that I guess there's no way to directly communicate. Or have you heard from people in China? Yeah, you know, I've heard from people uh, kind of one off out of China, but not not anything in a coordinated fashion. You know, I would love to uh, crack that market because I think it's one of the obviously most populous country in the world. And they're very progressive people. Um, they've built a huge, huge middle class over just the last 20 years. Um, so I think there's got to be a lot of opportunity there. But I find that the Asian culture and of course, they're all different, but the, they, they, t- they tend to be more reserved. And they don't talk about this as much where, you know, in the United States, uh, I guess maybe our culture is to to talk about things and to discuss them amongst ourselves. Uh, There doesn't doesn't appear to me to be as much that way. But I wish I knew the truth, you know. (laughs) Now, Stanton Friedman often mentions the fact that he'd be giving a lecture and he'd ask the people in the audience, "Okay, tell me, how many of you have seen a UFO in a certain percentage, a fairly decent percentage will raise their hands? How many of you have reported the sighting? And then most of those hands go down. I don't think that's changed much over the years. Do we still have that stigma? If you say you saw a UFO, people will think you're nuts. Well, yeah, I think it's more that people think that people will think they're nuts than it is that actually that they'll think they're nuts. Um, I find most people get pretty excited when you tell them a a UFO story. But uh, I actually ask a set of questions when I first do a, uh, a talk. I have a chart of, of course, the Hubble telescope of all the galaxies out there in a little one-inch square piece of space. And I asked the question, I mean, how many people in the room think that we're alone in the universe, that there's no other life out there except us? Um, um, Or actually, I ask ask it a little different way. I ask, you know, how many people here believe that there's other life out there somewhere in the universe? You know, somewhere in this vast universe, there is life. And 100% of the hands will go up. Now, you know, it's interesting because probably about, 15, 20, 30 years ago, that wouldn't have been the case. You might you might have only two-thirds of the hands that would go up. But today, literally 100% of the hands go up. Maybe one person doesn't raise their hand. But then I ask, I step it back and I say, now how many of you think that it's possible that some point in the distant past or some point currently that that life is visiting us here on Earth? And generally, it falls off to if it's a UFO crowd, probably it's an 80 percent or back from 100 to 80 percent. And if it's a non-UFO crowd, it generally falls back to about 50-50, uh, which I find interesting that, that people would think there's life out there 100 percent, but only half of them think it's ever been here. There's a stretch in that, I expect. But hasn't it always been the case that, what, a third to half of the people in the U.S. when they do these surveys – believe in UFOs and the prevailing opinion, of course, is that they come from other places, other planets. Yeah, the answer, I don't really know the answer to that. I mean, I think that's probably true. But what I find fascinating is if I speak to a UFO group, a crowd, I mean, it's like 80, 90 percent say, oh, yeah, they're here. If I speak to just a general public, because I speak at libraries, I had the opportunity to speak at the Explorers Club in New York City last week or two weekends ago or whatever, uh, to 80 people, mostly scientist type folks um, who don't know much about UFOs. And I only got a 50 percent factor out of that group. But, um, yeah, I, I, you're probably right. I mean, I would think about maybe half. But that tells me that there's a whole education process that has to happen for the other half. But then the last question I ask of the three questions is, how many of you in here have had your own uh, experience with a UFO? And that generally drops it right down to about 10 percent. I, I find that it's a, a handful of people. You know, if it's a room of 50, is maybe five people in there had, had their own personal encounter. So, I think that that aligns with the numbers that you were mentioning earlier that Stan was talking about. We'll get into more of our discussion with Jan Harzan, now the executive director of MUFON. A lot more to go. In the meantime, may I recommend you check out our new lower prices at the Paracast Plus. Go to plus.theparacast.com. That's plus.theparacast.com. Chris O'Brien's running a bit late. We'll hear from Gogs McKay a bit later, and we'll continue in a moment with Jan Harzan of MUFON. 
I'm Gene Steinberg, and of course, you're in the Paracast. <laughs> The award-winning graphic converter, the universal genius for photo editing on your Mac. Join over one and a half million loyal users for this Swiss Army Knife photo editing app. It gives you all you expect from a top flight image editing app with tons of features and most important, it's easy to use. Get 20% off from lemkesoft.de slash gene. That's l-e-m-k-e-soft.de slash gene. Gene. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com, and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. Fully cooked, ready-to-eat bacon. I'm talking thick, meaty, center-cut, presidential bacon. Savory and delicious. I buy some, I use some, I store some. Awesome. No refrigeration needed with a 10-year shelf life. NASA Pack technology. Bacon. Fully cooked, fully hydrated, ready-to-eat right from the pack bacon. Or warm and served. Life-saving, ready-to-eat bacon. 10-year shelf life bacon. Ships free at FullyCookedBacon.com. FullyCookedBacon.com. This is a healthcare alert from the Pain Relief Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee, back, shoulder, or ankle pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You don't have to suffer any longer. You can immediately qualify for a pain relieving brace at little or no cost to you by calling our 24 7 pain relief hotline at 866 389 0620. Delivery is free and all paperwork is handled for you. If you are on Medicare and have knee, back, shoulder, or ankle pain, don't wait you can qualify to immediately receive a pain relieving brace at little or no cost by calling our 24 7 pain hotline now at 866-389-0620 our representatives are standing by 24 7 to take your call and rush you your pain relieving brace at little or no cost to you shipping is free and all paperwork is handled for you just call 866-389-0620 that's 866-389-0620 again 866-389-0620 ProPure water filters, making water great again. Taste and feel the difference with state-of-the-art filter technology. Pro1 G2.0 and ProMax filters are independent lab-tested to NSF standards. Choose from gravity, countertop, pitcher, shower, and inline filtration products. There's a ProPure for you. Buy risk-free today. Visit your authorized ProPure dealer for details or ProPureUSA.com. That's P-R-O-P-U-R-U-S-A.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. We're continuing here with Jan Harzan, the executive director of MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network, and we're covering a lot of meta issues here about UFOs. Now, with the growing realization about life in the universe, we see all these so-called Goldilocks or type N planets that are being discovered around other star systems, getting closer and closer to us, galactically speaking, of course, 
Do you think that's also pushing or is it pushing more attention to UFOs, the possibility that ET is here now, not just a theoretical possibility? I think it absolutely is. I mean, particularly uh, when people are starting to see close-up images of some of these planets and some of the their, of their satellites, uh, moons, um, our deep space probes. I mean, I, I think it's all po- – and now this Kepler telescope, which is looking out so far out and finding these exoplanets. I think it's becoming – I don't want to say painfully, but it's becoming very obvious to the most casual of observers that there are Earth-like planets all over the place out there. I mean – we live in a galaxy that has 100 billion stars, and there are 100 billion galaxies. And if you multiply that out, I mean, you're t- talking the tri- you know, quadrillions of, of every one of those stars has planets around it, right? At least one. Um, the odds are just, it's got to be that there's other people out there's other life out there, whether it looks like us or not. I mean, you can debate that. But I think that's what's really pushing things right now is people are realizing that there's no way we're alone. So, but so, but then the question becomes: Where are they? <laughs> Why aren't they here? Why aren't they talking to? Why aren't they landing on the White House lawn and speaking to the president? Well, I, maybe maybe we're just not that interesting to them, frankly. Yes, but you'd also have to think here: if they're coming to another planet, we don't know what kind of ethics they have, or if they have an ethics in the way we even understand it. But certainly, if they see us as a primitive race, a primitive species. Wouldn't they be circumspect about what they do, or they don't give a damn? Well, you know, the way the way I do it is I flip it on its end and I say, well, okay, let's assume that we're out there circling a planet somewhere out in space, and we look down and we see this life down there, and they're killing each other and they're warring with each other and doing all these horrible things to each other. Would we want to go down and introduce ourselves to them? I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I always get a kick out of you know reports from. Uh, farmer who sees a ufo he pulls out a shotgun and takes a shot at it it's like really why would you do that i mean (laughs) these are advanced people (laughs) you don't want to be shooting at people who are more advanced than you are but you know we don't really know why they don't come talk to us specifically i mean we do know that there are obviously some people that they do engage with uh, on a one up seems to be like on a one-on-one level obviously we have the stories from the 50s and 60s where they supposedly made a treaty with uh, our president uh, and did some other things whether that's true or not, I mean, it's still to be told. But I, I just think, honestly, if anybody who's 100 years, 1,000 years, or a million years more advanced than us, it'd be like us stopping along the side of the road to talk to a cow we see. I mean, it, it, we don't have a whole lot to say to them, right? So why stop? Now, a bunch of possibilities come up, and I have about four questions based on what you said, but let's just look at one of them. Say they're 1,000 years ahead of us, 10,000, a million would we even recognize them for what they are? Would we even recognize the way they travel? Or is it possible what we see is just staged for our benefit? I'm thinking of the movie Contact, where yeah. the Jodie Foster character sees her late father as supposedly E.T., and he says, I'm coming to you this way because you would not accept my real appearance. I think it's, it's highly likely that, that that's exactly right, that uh, they have the ability to I mean, obviously, we're, there's more than one race out there visiting. Just take a very advanced race who's a thousand years more advanced than us. That's a that's a very good possibility that they, if we saw them in their current state, we might we might freak out. So, knowing how our minds work, they project to us what is something that we can accept uh, in terms of what they look like. So, I think that's highly probable. What about the possibility that we are in part? interpreting what we see because it's so alien we're trying to make it seem as if it's something we accept well that's that's, that's a good possibility too i mean you know uh, joel barker did his whole shtick on paradigms and how it's hard for people to grasp a new concept i think one of the toughest things to grasp is the fact that you've got people who aren't from here visiting us uh, whatever form they're in there's a story about the uh, the indians when uh, came over from when we came over from Europe uh, that uh, they couldn't see our ships because it was not in their paradigm that there'd be ships, these huge ships. Uh, I don't know how you could be in the mind of an Indian, but, or a native American, but um, it it makes some sense to me. I've had my own conversations with people where they just can't grasp the possibility of there being extraterrestrials on this planet. I mean, it's just like so far outside of their belief system that they just block it out. Um, we have cases where people 
have extraordinary sightings, and there's a group of them. And yet half of the group will completely forget they ever had that sighting, even though the other people say, no, you were there with me. We were in the car together. Don't you remember when you saw this? And it's completely wiped from their brain. Now, there's other reasons why that might be so, but I find that fascinating that our minds become filters for anything that is so far outside that we can't accept it. Uh, and I think it's a protection mechanism that's been built into the wiring of our brains so that we don't overload and go crazy. I mean, I'm not a psychologist, but I but I can see, I see the actual effects from talking to real witnesses about their experiences, and uh, I can attest that it's true. Now, when you interview witnesses, yes. you your people over at MUFON. Do you probe into their background, into prior experiences of any kind that might be unusual, or are you focusing mostly on that particular sighting? How much are we looking into the background of these people? Well, I mean, we basically look in the background in terms of who they are, what they do for a living, you know, what what their educational level is, um, how long they've lived where they lived. Um, vast majority of sightings, I mean, probably up in the night, high 90 percent, usually happen in someone's either backyard, front yard, you know, I stepped out on the patio to let the dog out uh, or light up a smoke. And I looked up and saw this object, you know, uh, it's, it's uncanny how many of those cases start out that way. Uh, so we basically verify the witness, uh, but we don't typically go back unless they share it with us. We're focused primarily on what it is they reported. Now, generally, if they've had other experiences, they'll probably mention those. But we try to take them one report at a time, you know. We do have some people who have multiple repeated events happen to them. Um, not always does it turn out that they're actual real events. I mean, we have people who just everything they see is a flying saucer. Everything they see is a, an alien. Um, so you have to kind of look at that and look at the data and, and kind of figure out what it is. We, we, we retain all the information that's been given to us, and it all gets put in our database. But um, – most people are lucky if they see one object in their lifetime. I mean, there are still people wishing they could see something who've been longtime MUFON members and have never seen a craft. Well, I look at it this way. I may have had one UFO sighting when I was really, really, I'm not really young, but in my 20s, which seems like an awful long time ago. We've got more to come with Jan Harzan of MUFON and Everything he's saying raises 20,000 questions, and we'll get into those questions and listener questions as we progress. I'm Gene Steinberg. Chris O'Brien and Gogs Mackay are coming. Of course, you're in The Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. In these uncertain times, it makes sense to have a sustainable backup method to cook food and boil water. If your current plan includes using a fuel-burning stove or cooking over an open fire, then there's a much better way. The Miniman Rocket Stove is a biomass-burning cooking stove that only requires small quantities of sticks and twigs for fuel. The Miniman Stove is easy to use, smokeless, portable, powerful, and sustainable. For the finest in survival cooking stoves and fire starters made right here in the USA, go to MinutemanStove.com. That's MinutemanStove.com. People who can afford a LASIK procedure sure are lucky. Imagine being able to throw away your contacts and glasses. Imagine waking up tomorrow with 20-20 vision. Too bad everyone can't afford LASIK. Well, guess what? There's a company that agrees with you. TLC Laser Eye Centers is now offering great prices on high-quality LASIK to make it affordable for everyone. That means you get the latest FDA-approved all-laser LASIK technology for less than what others charge. And if you call right now, we'll schedule a free appointment so you can discover if LASIK is right for you. Results may vary. Call 1-800-933-1427.
Even better, if you're one of the first hundred callers, ask about an extra $400 off your all-laser LASIK procedure. That's $200 off per eye. We've already performed over 2 million procedures. Let us help you. Discover how you can get the quality LASIK experience you deserve for less than what others charge. For your free appointment, call 1-800-933-1427. 1-800-933-1427. Winter has just begun, and are you already tired of being cold? How would you like to never be cold again? This is Dale with Fortress Clothing, and I'm here to tell you, you will never be cold again with Fortress. If you're tired of freezing your butt off, elk hunting, sitting in a tree stand, deer hunting, winter camping, fishing, ice fishing, no longer fear the cold. If you snowmobile, ski, snowboard, get Fortress. Sledding with the kids, shoveling the walks, shopping, or if you or your spouse get cold feet at home, get Fortress. If you're stuck outside working in the cold or find yourself in an emergency situation, get our winter bug out bag and you will never be cold again. Fortress is the answer. So quit complaining and go to FortressClothing.com. It's a mid-layer garment that goes with anything you want to wear. Enter coupon code radio and get 20% off any item. Go now while we still have inventory. FortressClothing.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-615-7709. That's 800-615-7709. 800-615-7709. Hi, this is Bryce Abel. I'm the producer of Dark Skies, the co-author of AD After Disclosure, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We have a special feature of the Paracast I do want to tell you about, because listeners have asked, gee, what's the best way to support you? Patronize your advertisers, of course, but what about the show itself, and we have something special for everyone. It's called the Paracast Plus, and we have a second radio show to go with it called After the Paracast, which can be anything. It can be chit-chat. It could be Monday morning quarterbacking, color commentary, special guests that don't appear in the regular show, extended interviews with the guests from the regular show. We also give you a commercial-free version of this show, free of the network ads, better quality audio, more content coming. Our friend Paul Kimball, the fellow who does UFO and paranormal documentaries, has given us some of his Other Side of Truth podcasts and videos that are going up exclusively to members of the Paracast Plus. Prices start at $4.99 a month. Check it out, plus.theparacast.com, P-L-U-S dot theparacast.com. With Jan Harzan, we're probing into, I guess, the experiences, methods, and what's being learned about UFOs by the Mutual UFO Network, of which he is the executive director. Although, of course, he might have preferred to be called international director. You can't change that now, can you? Can you go to the board and say, wouldn't you you really like to call me international director? (laughs) I could if I I wanted. Yes, yeah, we could change it back if we want to do. It's not that big of a a deal. But um, executive director, I mean, I think, I think it, it it plays well. When I look at other nonprofits and how they do things, they're all they're all titled as executive director, even though they might be international organizations. They don't call them international directors. So I just always thought that had a nice ring to it, international director. But it'll probably stay executive director. <laughs> Let me ask you here a question from one of our listeners, Randall, who goes by the name of Ufology. He's from Canada and he's been a regular on the forums and also the show. And a couple of these questions have a bit of an edge to it. So let me 
go into it here. If MUFON obtained verifiable evidence of alien visitation, which would you support? Okay, one is a little bit critical, but, you know, just ride with me here. It's the question. A, cost-free disclosure to the public. B, disclosing it only for a price. If so, what price would you consider fair? That might be a little kind of insulting, wouldn't it? No, I mean, the answer is flat out. We, we would definitely put it out to the public free. I mean, it's, it's, we're here to report to the public. I mean, what we're trying to do is for those who are willing to support MUFON, just like Paracast, you know, they get some extra perks and some different things like, uh, you know, looking at our, being able to look into our files going back 20, 30 years. Um, but no, what we try to do is, is if as information comes in, I mean, we've got a case today that uh, we, we, happened in 1957, but it's an extraordinary case. Um, it's going to get written up in our journal this month. Now, of course, you have to be a member to read the journal, but it'll get posted on our website. That's free to the public. You can look, read about it on the on the website. But for more detailed analysis and in-depth uh, view and writing on things, that'll, that'll probably be a member-only type of a perk. But it only costs four ninety nine a month to be a member of MUFON these days, so it's not a big deal. It's, it's a cup and a half of, you know, Starbucks coffee. Um, is it because that it cheap? Costs- Here, a Starbucks coffee is more than that. Is it? Yeah. It- Okay. Well, you know, it just amazes me. People will put out hundreds of dollars a month for coffee and things like that, and they don't even they don't even blink an eye. But boy, if they have to pay four ninety nine a month for one thing to get the information they really want to have, uh, they get crazy about it. But but no, to answer the gentleman's question, I mean, absolutely. If we have something extraordinary, we're going to break the story and get it out to the public as fast as we can. Now, you brought up the question earlier about you know what do we do with when we, when we investigate sightings? I mean. I think one big difference between MUFON and other organizations who report things about UFOs is we actually take the time to go verify the witnesses. I mean, we don't take someone's story that they put out uh, on the Internet and start ballyhooing it out to the public that it's real until we know for a fact that the person's been verified, the story's been verified. If we can get corroborating information, as we have in this case I just mentioned, boy, that's important. And then you've got a real case that you can talk about with zeal to, to the public. What I find, though, interestingly enough, is that a lot of the public just yawns and goes on with their daily lives. It's like to them, it's like, oh, well, there's the extraterrestrials. Who cares? <laughs> I just I just find that a fascinating, you know, I had a friend once tell me, well, Jan, this is all good and well if it's true. But you know what? I still have to pay my mortgage. So I'm worrying about that. OK, go worry about paying the mortgage. You know? Sure. But if an E.T. race revealed itself, that would be a major disruption to our society. Yes. In fact, is that also a possible reason why governments may not reveal any such thing? Not necessarily because UFOs are hostile, but just the existence of something like that upends the energy industry, upends all sorts of things. What about organized religion? What kind of impact does it have? Does that give a reason for possible secrecy? I think it absolutely does. You know, I don't know personally why they don't reveal what they know, but I mean, I could put myself in their shoes and come up with some really important scenarios. I mean, the first one is what you just said, which is all the disruption to our industries, to our stock market, to our world religions, to different things. I mean, now stopping right there for a second, the Catholics are way out ahead of this thing. They've already announced that there's extraterrestrial life, you know, and they talk about it and, and uh, they've been on camera on, on TV about it. And they basically, they're, they're looking at it as an opportunity to, uh, recruit new members to the Catholic Church, you know, <laughs> when these people show up, which I think is a great positive way to look at it. Well, they're but, looking at it as these are also God's subjects. But what if E.T. lands and communicates to us and says, religion, oh, we don't do that anymore. Or, hey, we were here a couple of thousand years ago. We were here a hundred thousand years ago and we did some genetic manipulation. And yep. the way you are now, we put you here. Yeah. So here's what I say to people, because uh, absolutely, is, is it possible we've been genetically manipulated? Absolutely. I, th- I, th- I think it's probably a high probability. Was it, was it that we were created by these extraterrestrials, uh, not necessarily by God himself? It's a possibility. Uh, but I always ask, okay, so let's just assume that's the case. Then who invented the extraterrestrial? Like who, who created the extraterrestrial? I mean, th- it all had to come from someplace. So there's gotta, at some place, there's got to be a creator. It just didn't pop out of nothingness. I mean, it had to... I'm an engineer by education, and, I, and you know, to me, I look at something and I look at and I'm fascinated by the design of it. And you just look at the human body and the intricate design and how all these different systems within the body have to work just perfectly, or else you drop dead. 
Well, uh, yeah, but the human back doesn't really make it. I think yeah. whoever created us, they got to rethink the back. I just think of the bed technology we have. You know, what it would have been to be, in a, be in a, living in a cave on a hard rock floor, and now we have our super foam beds and everything else. I, I, I wouldn't have made it very long. Maybe that's why they died so early back in those days. Well, I'm looking at a new mattress now. We need a new mattress, and we're looking into some of these foam mattresses they sell online. I won't mention specific sponsors because we're talking with them. We might even add one. And I think if you add them, you get the bed as part of the package. So I'm just, I can't wait till that happens. <laughs> but, Let's get but, back to the disclosure thing because we kind of yes. fell into it. Okay. But I'd like to just continue with that if, you, if I could. Sure. Because I, I think the more likely scenario, honestly, is the fact that this has major national security implications. If you have the ability to get here from far out there, in essence, you're time traveling or you're manipulating space and time in, in a way we've never even thought possible. So you would not want that to fall into enemy hands because if it did, I mean, it, just here's just a simple example. You know, someone who had that kind of capability could put a nuclear bomb on the steps of the White House and blow it up before anyone even knew it was there. Instantaneous. Boom. There's no, there's no way to, pre to prepare against that. To say, you know, so I can see where the national security of this thing was what drove it so deep in the secret world. But I think we've come a long way in the last 70, 60, 70 years as a civilization. I mean, we probably haven't as, in my opinion, one of the one of the big reasons why we wouldn't have wanted to announce this or brought this out is I think our spiritual advancement has far lagged behind our technological advancement as a race. You know, and that's something we could continue. Chris O'Brien's running late. Of course, he returned earlier this week from Thailand. Gogs Mackay is probably stuck on the road somewhere getting back to his home. We have Jan Harzan, Executive Director of MUFON. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in The Paracast. <laughs> for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast Jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children. Stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. From the pages of the Bible comes a terrifying account of an ancient beast that was half man, half demon. It is returned in a best-selling novel, Nephilim, by L.A. Marzulli. Indiegogo presents you with an opportunity to get involved in making this supernatural novel into a major motion picture. Join journalist Mac McKenzie as he travels halfway around the world to uncover the truth about aliens and demons. Join our Indiegogo campaign to get Nephilim made into a movie. Go to Indiegogo.com, hashtag Nephilim. There is an affordable alternative to the high cost of health care that offers freedom from insurance while providing compliance with the Obamacare individual mandate. Imagine having access to quality, affordable health care that allows you the freedom to choose your doctor and hospital. Members can share up to 100% of necessary medical expenses, including some alternative treatments. Find out how you and your family can contain health care costs without giving up your freedom. Go to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. This is Ben Gordon, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, Power Swabs is the answer. In five minutes, you'll see two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. There's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes, and you're done. To try Power Swabs, call 1-800-290-8480. Your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free. 1-800-290-8480. That's 1-800-290-8480. 
Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-704-6182. A Place for Mom offers free, one-on-one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-704-6182. That's 1-800-704-6182. As a doctor, I see patients every day who are losing their vision to age-related macular degeneration, also known as AMD. If you have blurry vision or blind spots, they can be symptoms of AMD, and if untreated, could lead to blindness. The good news? AMD can be managed with effective clinically approved treatments that may reverse some vision loss. For free AMD information, contact the Foundation Fighting Blindness at 1-800-BLINDNESS. That's 1-800-BLINDNESS. There is a cure in sight. This is Hilly Rose, and I hope that you do listen to the Paracast, because you will learn a great deal about the paranormal. We've got Jan Harzan, Executive Director of MUFON, joining us. We're talking about the possibilities here of what the government may know or not know. And obviously, that's ripe with all sorts of possibilities. But the question I guess we have over the years is, assuming there was a government policy in the late 40s to keep this under wraps for any reason, how do you keep a secret generation after generation, president after president, multiple political parties? How do you do that? Well, I think the first answer is you stop telling the presidents, because I think after uh, Kennedy and uh, Richard Nixon taking Jackie Gleason out to show him bodies. I, I, I think they realize you can't tell these guys a whole lot. So, But do you I don't believe, believe that? After... That's the story. Did he really take Jackie Gleason out to show him bodies? Well, that's what Jackie said on his television show. So I, I don't know, but I, but I can tell you, I think after that, I think they ratcheted it back quite a bit. I, I mean, I believe that maybe the president knows just enough to keep him or her in the know, but it's not so much that they know enough. I found it interesting on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live here this past year when uh, Obama was on and was repeatedly asked by Jimmy about whether he had been to Area 51 or had done any investigating of what was out there. At first, he joked about it, and you can you can Google it and watch the, the show, that, that segment, that five-minute segment. But at the very end, after, after really being pressed hard by Jimmy Kimmel about what he knew, the president basically said, I can't talk about it. You know, I can't reveal anything, I think was his exact words. I can't reveal anything. And, and so that tells you there's something to reveal. I mean, if you can't reveal something, then you there's something there to reveal. But I don't know that he knows much more than that. I mean, I, I think the way you keep things secret is you tell very few people or you compartmentalize it. I just had this conversation yesterday with Dr. Bob Wood, who recently retired from our board, but sure. is still actively involved in MUFON. And we were talking about, you know, the hardest thing for people to get who are not part of this UFO field, even the people in the UFO field, is how do they manage to keep this thing a secret? And he said, Jan, when I worked in government projects and had a security clearance, they used like four different things. I, I'd, be, I'd be lucky if I can remember the four things he told me. But basically, they start with uh, appealing to your patriotism. You are a good citizen of the United States, and you want to you want the United States to flourish, so you will keep this a secret, won't you? And you think a lot about these old 80-year-old guys from World War II and back. I mean, a lot of them have gone to their grave holding vast secrets of what they knew about the Roswell crash, about what happened at Wright-Patterson. I mean, I mean, we're at the very tail end of that generation now with just a few people still living. And the vast majority of them are taking whatever they know to their graves, which I just find fascinating. Probably the last generation was my country right or wrong. I mean, after most people went through the 60s and— uh, in the 70s, and with the whole Richard Nixon thing, I think people became a little more jaded on the, on the government uh, and began to question the government, 
particularly with the Vietnam War and that whole thing. Uh, so today, I think people are pretty much, yeah, I'm being lied to. I, I get it. I'm being lied to. <laughs> we, you know, that might explain that. a lot of the politics in the current election. I don't want to get deep yep. into the weeds there because we have this problem like a lot of people do where people tune into the show not to hear politics, except, of course, they love to hear about the Kennedy assassination or a 9-11 conspiracy, but not the day-to-day politics because they get enough of that already. And yeah. they come here and they don't want to hear it. And when we even mention it in passing, some freak. So I am going to mention it because in relation to UFOs, you kind of have to. If the government is holding a secret, well, politicians are in control or maybe they're not. So your contention here is that presidents may know something, but just the bare essentials. I don't believe they're, they're fully read in on everything that's happening. And, and I don't think the American people will be either if they ever do come out and make an announcement. We have to realize this is being run by the intelligence community, which makes its its professions based on lies. That, that we have to remember that it's the intelligence community that's running this thing, and I mean they don't want the truth out there. They want to obfuscate it with with lies, and you know. So if we're ever told anything by our government, by anybody, we have to realize it's probably going to be a story that's been spun to play it the way they want us to hear it. Um, not the truth. So we'll probably never get the truth, uh, unfortunately. That's, I guess that's maybe my jaded way to say it. It kind of reminds me of the silly story I made up, a, I don't know, a couple of years ago, suggesting that if President Obama, in his final days in office, finally gets up to the podium and says, I have something to tell you that we've been keeping secret because of national security reasons, he brings E.T. out to the podium and says, okay, this person is from another world and another star system. I'd say probably 50 to 75 percent of the people watching this would think it's just a trick. Yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. I've often said, you know, if if a UFO crashed in the middle of Hollywood Boulevard, uh, and the news crews all rushed there to take photographs of it most, and put it on the 6 o'clock news, that most people would think it was just a stunt by Steven Spielberg for a new movie. You know, it, they, they, they wouldn't, even if they were told it was a real extraterrestrial craft that had crashed, I think most of them would, would pass it off as, oh, well, this is just poppycock. So, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying, frankly. It wouldn't be like the scene we see in Independence Day where everybody reacted and, <laughs> and people had roof parties. It's yeah. the end of the world as we know it from the particular song. In any case, let's just move back to disclosure. So we have presidents who promise something. And we had Hillary Clinton going on several shows saying they'd look into UAP, that she knew that at all shows she did her research or wanted to make it seem as if she did her research. We know John Podesta actively is interested in UFOs, wrote the introduction to... Leslie Kane's book. But now we have a situation here, obviously, Hillary lost. So does that put the kibosh on any hopes that something's going to happen? Or maybe she just said that because she wanted all the votes she could get. Well, we have to remember that, you know, we've had several presidents tell us they were going to tell us the truth on this. I mean, going back to, uh, we could think back to uh, Gerald Ford when he was a congressman and ran a congressional hearing on UFOs. In fact, it was the first and only time that a congressional hearing has been held on the subject of UFOs. Uh, to get to the bottom of what was going on in Michigan back in 1966, uh, even though many, many people testified, absolutely nothing came out of it. Well, I suppose if you include the Condon report, you can say quite accurately that nothing came out of it, although many feel that was just a whitewash. It certainly gave Project Blue Book the excuse to shut down. Then that was followed up a few years later by Jimmy Carter when he was running for president. Jimmy had had his own UFO sighting uh, as a governor and had vowed that when he got in the office, he would reveal all the files on UFOs to the American people. Uh, That never happened. Uh, We've had other people try to attempt to do it. And then uh, most recently, of course, Hillary came out with her famous statements that if she's elected, she'll push hard to get files released. And I thought it was interesting that she said on the new word for UFO is UAP. I, I, love, I love that. The scientists don't want to be associated with the word UFO because there's too much craziness around that word. But, but they'll call it UAP. Well, excuse me, but it's the same thing. I mean, it's an unidentified aerial phenomenon. So 
but she couched the words with, and she ended her statement, public statement, by saying, unless it has national security implications. Well, excuse me, I, I, I think extraterrestrials coming from someplace out there, whether it's out there, right here, or however they get here, would have national security implications. So basically what you've said is, I'm going to tell you everything unless, I, I can't tell you everything, when we already know that she won't be allowed to tell anything. So I, I didn't really jump at that one. I, I think it's nice that she was talking about it. I think it's great that John Podesta has a uh, keen interest in this and, and, and wants to see it come out. I mean, I'm all for anybody who wants to put the truth out there. Uh, I just don't believe that anybody in public power is going to be able to be granted that. Um, I wouldn't mind going back and just picking up on a question you asked a little earlier. Sure. And that was, how do they keep it secret? Because what I was shared with yesterday by Bob Wood from uh, was a physicist at McDonnell Douglas for 43 years working on top secret projects. Uh, he said it's basically four things. The first is they appeal to your patriotism. You know, as a good American, you certainly wouldn't want this information out there because it could harm your country, right? You salute and you say yes, yes. And then, then basically they make you sign paperwork that says if you ever talk about this subject, you know, now some of the things don't have like a 30-year shelf life to them. Some have an infinite shelf life to them. But if you do, then you're going to lose your pension. All these bad things could happen to you. And, oh, by the way, you, you could go to jail. Um, you know, and so you basically make people sign an agreement with their signature that says they're not going to talk about this. Let's do our break and continue on the methods they may use, threats and whatever, to keep a secret. Okay. We have Jan Harzan, the executive director of MUFON. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in The Paracast. <laughs> for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a -a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Classic science fiction at its best. Available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R O C K O I D S dot com. How confident are you in your food storage? If it was all you had to rely on, would it sustain your family? Hard times, good times, or any time, New Mana Storable Food is the proven superior choice. Learn for yourself what happened when one man ate only New Mana Storable Food for an entire month. Online at PowerPrepper.com. That's PowerPrepper.com. Experience the New Mana difference. America made food stores I love to eat. Yum! This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. We're having a very pleasant session here with Jan Harzan, going back and forth, talking about a lot of UFO aspects. But right now, we want to continue about how to keep the secret. And you were mentioning in our previous segment, one is to sign an agreement. You know, yeah. in blood, whatever, saying 
you're not going to disclose this on every penalty in creation. Things that will happen to you. Now, right. I you suppose can. you can add that, that if you're not here anymore, we'll take action against your family because they may be in on the secret because of suspicion. Wouldn't that be a way to prevent the deathbed confession? Absolutely. I mean, you, you, you basically the third step is you threaten them. If you talk about this, bad things will happen to you and your family. Do not talk about it. And, and we've had a number of people who've been threatened with their lives on that. And then the fourth step uh, is they kill you <laughs> and they just make you disappear. So, OK, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's go with that one for a moment. They make you disappear or in the modern lingo, they disappear you. So we have Dr. McDonald, the scientist from the 60s, who supposedly offs himself. The UFO researcher from the 50s, M.K. Jessup, who wrote the case for the UFOs. We're not talking about the annotated edition and the Philadelphia experiment and that nonsense. But we have two instances here where people kill themselves. Now, they may have had perfectly normal, if unfortunate, reasons for doing that. But do we have any evidence anybody has disappeared or possibly offed themselves because of the threat or pressure? Well, I think I think we do. I think it happens typically in a fashion where there's always a, a doubt as to whether it was purposely done. People just jump out of their hospital window. James Forrestal, head of the CIA. Generally, you wouldn't put someone in charge of the CIA who is suicidal. That's not what we typically do. But yet he died under mysterious circumstances because he supposedly jumped out of his hospital window. You mentioned McDonald. You've mentioned some other folks. I mean, I know that it's hard to prove this, but we just see people who just end up dead uh, who are going down a path. I mean, Congressman Schiff in New Mexico, I think it's highly strange that a man who goes up against the government, the Air Force specifically, and asks for the records from Roswell to be delivered to his office and, of course, they can't find them. They can't find the records, which I find fascinating as well. Like, oh, just the time period that you're exactly asking for just happened to disappear out of our files. Along uh, with Hillary Clinton's emails. Yeah, yeah, they're maybe in the same vault as Hillary Clinton's emails, perhaps. But he, he died within a year of that of cancer. I know, having talked to Dr. Stephen Greer, he's had claims he's had cancer planted. I have no reason to disbelieve him. I mean, he's had cancer planted on him twice trying to kill him. I know How another, do you plant cancer on someone? I, I wish I knew. Maybe I don't want to know, but it, it's probably through some kind of electromagnetic means of, of doing that. I, I honestly don't know. I do know that there are researchers who were close to him who, frankly, have moved away because uh, they're afraid for their own life. His own uh, assistant, Sherry Adamack, uh, died of cancer, uh, which they believe was planted on her. So, you know, I had Ben Rich, uh, who spoke to me. Uh, at this UCLA event many, many years ago, not just to myself, but to 200 engineers at the, at the meeting and then more privately in a smaller session about uh, our capabilities for um, traveling to the stars, he ended up dying a year and a half later of cancer. Uh, it was evident to me he was trying to get the word out of what our capabilities were back in 93. And there's powers out there I don't think who want that out there. Now, could any of those have been, deaths could have been caused by natural, I mean, when I say natural causes, that it wasn't someone who planted it there or didn't purposely do it. It's always possible. But the problem is you have so many of them in a row that it looks very strange that these people who knew too much all of a sudden just weren't there anymore. That's the question. Of course, if you want to look at the skeptical approach to that, you'd say, well, how many people who have no known interest in UFOs die suddenly of cancer or anything else? I mean, I think of my late brother-in-law, Stephen Beiser, where he seemed to be okay in decent health. Then within a few months, he's diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. He undergoes chemotherapy and he's gone. Yes. It's, it's a hard thing to prove. I, I, Gene, I absolutely say that. But it just looks so strange when you have these people. I mean, it just, is, it just seems like the odds of it happening that many times in a row is just too great to, to not be something there. Right. But don't you think if the government off somebody or at least moves someone in that direction, doesn't that raise the other possibility that this act will be exposed or look suspicious? Well, I think the vast majority of people take the same take which you had done, which is, you know, OK, people die every day of cancer. So people die every day of a heart attack. So the fact that this guy had a 
heart attack. Here, here was something that was shared for me by by a uh, I can't use his name because he's, uh, he's he's wants to keep a lower profile, but it was a gentleman who's come out with some pretty extraordinary things within the UFO field. He's not a, he's not a UFO guy. He's just a guy who was in the military and had an experience, and he shared it with the public. And it's kind of not helped his life a lot, so he's kind of like trying to lay low on it. But basically, was in an intelligence operation back in the Vietnam War, and he said, Jan. Basically, it was surveillance satellite photographs of the Vietnam area, you know, what we were bombing on and the targets, as well as in Cambodia. And there was these guys knew before it was ever announced to the public that we were in Cambodia when we weren't supposed to be. You know, Congress had said, you're not to go outside of the Vietnam. You, you can't do that. But yet we were running missions all day long in Cambodia and in Laos where we weren't supposed to be, according to congressional law. But these guys knew it. Anyway, they were told – you cannot travel to your anywhere outside the United States because of because of your security clearance and what you what you know. You are a security risk. You can't leave the country. Well, uh, there was a guy working with them. Uh, it was one of a twin. The twins were both working there, and he decided to take his family on a trip to to a family vacation to Europe. In other words, he didn't follow the rules. Well, while he was over there. His car went off a cliff and killed him. And this gentleman said to me, Jan, we all knew that because he broke the rule, he was taken care of. And I'll tell you, none of us ever broke the rules. I mean, they, they basically knew that if they didn't do what they were told to do, something not so good would happen to them. And he was said he, he was frightened for his life. He was he was fear, fearful for his life. I mean, I don't know how many more of these people would come forward and share that with you, but I mean— Trust me, they they will do what they need to do to keep the secret. What about Roswell? I mean, we've had the deathbed confessions. We had people remembering all this stuff. The only thing that yeah. bothers me about Roswell is that it didn't happen until 30 years after the event that these yeah. things first started coming forth. But wouldn't we have seen something there if Roswell was more than just a test aircraft or a balloon? I'm not sure I understand the question. Would, would we have seen more Why there? do we see people coming out with all this stuff about Roswell, all these recollections of 1947, even if they came 30 years later, if there was a crash of a spaceship there and not, as is sometimes theorized, a test aircraft or a mogul balloon, wouldn't there have been more activity to prevent them from saying anything? I guess the way I would ask the question is, why has the Air Force worked so hard to debunk this? I mean, they've written 500-page books about the fact that it was a, a, a crash dummy in a balloon. You know, they've changed their story three different times. It, first, it was a weather balloon, you know, back in, in the day. That was the day after it happened. You know, that then it was something else, and then it was a mogul balloon. And, and then it was, uh, oh, it was just a crash dummy, you know, f- sent up in a balloon and for testing purposes in a flight suit. Um, that people saw. That's what they saw when they saw these these uh, supposed extraterrestrials. So, I mean, they have worked awfully hard to try to debunk something that if it was just a weather balloon, they could say it's just a weather balloon. I mean, but you've got, you know, Air Force officials, I would hope that they would know what a weather balloon looks like versus some other extraterrestrial craft. So, um I think the best thing I ever saw on Roswell was a video done, I believe it was done by Stanton Friedman many, many, many years ago. You might have been alluding to it, but it was uh, called Recollections of Roswell. You can order it through the Fund for UFO Research. Let's break here, then talk about the Friedman video. We have Jan Harzan of MUFON here. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> The award-winning graphic converter, the universal genius for photo editing on your Mac. Join over one and a half million loyal users for this Swiss Army Knife photo editing app. It gives you all you expect from a top flight image editing app with tons of features and most important, it's easy to use. Get 20% off from lemkesoft.de slash gene. That's l-e-m-k-e soft dot d-e slash gene. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. 
They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. Hi, my name is Stephen Holstein. In my 20s, I abused stimulants and anabolic steroids to the point where my adrenal glands were shot. I suffered from extreme fatigue and an inability to handle stress. For over six years, I have been taking adrenal supplements, including herbs, glandulars, vitamin C, and vitamin B5. All these supplements did was treat the symptoms and produced only minimal results. Now, just after one month on Synergy One and ADR Medics, I truly feel rejuvenated. I have never felt such relaxation before from any adrenal supplement as I did just 10 minutes after taking ADR Medics. I then noticed Synergy One made me wake up rested and with much more energy. No more hungover, groggy feeling upon arising. I had almost considered going to another country for stem cell therapy as a last resort, but now I truly feel rejuvenated on Synergy One and ADR Medics. Success happens with Synergistic Nutrition. Call 888-988-3325 or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. Did you know your car can be hacked just like your computer or phone? Hackers can hijack the signal of your own key fob to burglarize your vehicle in seconds. The Black Hole Faraday Key Fob Bag is a signal and penetrable shield that stops these hacks in their tracks. Protect one of your most valuable assets. Go to HackProofBag.com. That's HackProofBag.com. And use promo code RADIO to get 20% off. Or call 805-222-4584. 805-222-4584. My computer is so slow, it's making me crazy. I used to have that problem. Did you quit using the computer or, or did you buy a new one? No, I called Geeks on Site. They made an appointment to visit my home and showed up the same day. You mean they didn't ask you to bring your computer to a shop? That's what happened when I called a support company. Geeks on Site can go to your home or business or even repair your computer online. They have 24-7 emergency service. If you're having problems with your PC or Mac, call Geeks on Site. 1-800-591-1682. Our friendly certified computer repair Care experts are available 24-7. Call now for a free diagnosis. 1-800-591-1682. Data recovery, virus removal, and maintenance for all laptops, desktops, printers, and networks. That's Geeks on Site for friendly, certified computer repair experts available 24-7 over the phone or in your home or business. Just call 1-800-591-1682. That's 1-800-591-1682. 1-800-591-1682. Paid non-attorney spokesperson, Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. We continue with Jan Harzan of MUFON as we continue close to half our session. And we're talking here about disclosure, what the government knows, whether or not people have been offed or disappeared as a result of what they know, and then what the people in Roswell knew and what might have been done to prevent them from revealing that. And you mentioned something here, a video, was it, with Stanton Friedman? Well, this was done many, many years ago. It was called Recollections of Roswell, probably one of the best videos I have ever seen. He did it with firsthand witnesses, the children of witnesses, there were some, I think, 20 or 30 people he interviewed, and just the fright and the fear on these people when they spoke, basically revealing that when this happened and they were there, they were told by the military people that if they said anything about it, they'd be picking their bones out of the desert, and, and it, it, in not such a polite way. So they knew that if they said anything, they would not be around much longer. You just watch these people, and you watch their faces, and you watch the fear come across them, and break down and crying. And it's like, why would they do that if they didn't have an extraordinary experience like they say they did? So um, I just thought it was a very compelling movie. And anyone who wants to uh, know about that, 
I would get a copy of that videotape. Well, you raise a very important point there. How often are people going to fake that? In fact, how many people even fake UFOs or UFO sightings or, or experiences? And maybe let's talk about that just very briefly as we kind of move aside from this. Now, we know there have been UFO hoaxes over the years. We know it's common for people on YouTube to put up fake UFO photos, more so now because the technology is so easy with all the digital fancy stuff, the new iPhone 7 Plus with the dual cameras and 4K video capability. That and some video editing processing software, you can do some amazing things. Absolutely. But, but the thing with digital is you can also go behind it. There is exit data. There's different things you can look at to see if anything's been changed. You can also look at the pixelation on the, to see if they put something in there. And, and we are pretty good at, at being able to figure out the hoaxes. It's a very small percentage. I mean, uh, not necessarily the videos per se, but just in overall of the 10,000 cases, say, a year uh, that get reported to us, only two, three, maybe 4% are hoaxes. Some of those aren't even, they're just basically people writing stuff uh, and making it up. And that's pretty easy to spot as well. So I'm, I'm not really worried about the hoaxes. I, I think those are easily taken out of the equation. Our biggest challenge in ufology is that we have a high noise to signal uh, ratio. In other words, you know, out of 10 sightings, maybe only one of them is a real craft from someplace else. The rest tend to be just misidentified things. And so because of that high noise to signal ratio, that's what allows people to hide behind this thing and say, oh, it's just this. It's just swamp gas. It's just a planet Venus. It's just a balloon. And the vast majority of the public will accept that and uh, go away without giving it any other thought. To most people, I think UFOs are matters of entertainment. Even if they believe that there are real things happening, possibly spaceships, it's not a direct interest. It's just a passing interest. Oh, okay. That's what's going on. That's cool. Let me go on and struggle with life and struggle with the economy and worry about this, that, and the other thing. Right. I mean, it doesn't impact them directly. So therefore, why should I worry about it? I have enough other things to worry about. I'll worry about it when they're, you know, you know, obstructing my drive or something. You know, it's like if, if it isn't anything I have to deal with right now, I'm not going to deal with it. I find that as a very common uh, response. But how do you get people, and this takes us away from disclosure, because I don't believe it's ever going to happen, or if it does, it have to be the press of events. How do you get past that with the general public? How do you say, wait a minute, folks, this can change society. This is the most important event of our times other than global warming or any of the other concerns. This can have a more immediate impact. Well, that's exactly what you do. You, you appeal to the so what. And the so what is, look, if there's beings visiting us from wherever they're from uh, with advanced technology, what if we had access to that advanced technology? What would our world look like? The picture that I would paint is that we'd have the ability to travel between L.A. and Hong Kong in an instant, right? We could literally live in Paris, uh, work in Los Angeles, and have dinner in Hong Kong all in the same day because we just skip around with this transportation, whatever, whatever you want to call it, faster than light travel, uh, wormhole technology, whatever it is that allows them to do that. Um, if we had that, it could transform our whole planet, not to mention traveling off planet, going to any place you'd want to go to in, in our solar system, maybe even in another galaxy. So I think it's extraordinary. I mean, I, every time I have to sit on an airplane, I've got to go down to Brazil. I mentioned my first leg of the flight from Los Angeles to Peru is 11 hours. Then I get to sit in an airport for nine hours, and then I get another four and a half hour flight, the falls that we're supposed to be uh, showing up at. So I, literally, I have a 24-hour wall clock time of transportation just to get me from Los Angeles to Brazil. That's just ridiculous. Well, the thing is here, though, we would assume then that E.T., if they were to get into open contact with us, would be willing to gift us this technology. They may decide, well, you know what? We're not ready for that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to disrupt your society because the disruption to go to free energy, whatever it is, you think about the oil interests, you think about all the industries that are impacted by this, that's like just the natural evolution of right. the use of energy. But now if we have a situation where it's disrupted overnight, how do we handle that? Or isn't that another reason to keep a secret? As a matter of fact, even if we were in touch with ET, the governments, wouldn't that be a cautionary note to say, you know, don't do this, we're not ready. Or maybe they feel that way if they have a code of ethics. 
you know, you mentioned the free. That was giving me my second one, which is free energy. I mean, that's just that's just the transportation and the free energy po- are just to me two of the biggest reasons why we'd want to delve into this and and research it more. Uh, and there's many others, but my gosh, you know, you look at wars on this planet. The vast many of them are all over resources, right? Uh, oil, uh, getting into the Middle East. If we didn't have that as an issue how much greater our, our lives would be uh, in terms of less conflict. Now, of course, you can be do it in a disruptive way, and that might cause a lot of people to be displaced. But, I mean, you just have to work through it. You have to think through it, and what can we do? I think there are other things that people can be doing. I was talking to someone the other day, and they were telling me about basically where the robotic technology is and that within the next few years, you know, most of what we do – and our daily lives is going to be taken over by these robots um, because the computers are reaching a point where there's more compute power in there than in, in the human brain. And if we can just figure out the programming for how to put that together, you've got Watson from IBM, which uh, you know beat Jeopardy and all the best Jeopardy champions and the chess players. Um, that was you know 10 years ago, 20 years ago. The exponential curve for the technology accelerating is just – still on a, on a ramp up, uh, you know, doubling every two years. So there are phenomenal things that are going to happen to us in the next 10 to 20 years that we just can't even fathom. I mean, could you have fathomed 10, 15, 20 years ago having a smartphone where you could have literally information at your fingertips? You could speak to the phone and it would tell you anything you want to know, tell you how to get there, how to make a reservation, that, you know, facts about things. I use it all the time. I mean, if I'm trying to do research on a paper or an article I'm writing, I'll ask the question, you know, what, how many are these there? How many of this, that? And, and it just, the information is right there at your fingertips. It's, it's amazing. Uh, and, and that's today, forward and ahead 20 years. It's going to be phenomenal. We can't even predict what might come then. More to come with Jan Harzan of MUFON. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Visit GCNlive.com today. Are you retired or facing retirement and you're afraid your income is going to be less than you'd like? I'm Pharmacist Keith, Dr. Wallach, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy, and I want to show you a low-cost way to create your own business, working around your current schedule, creating extra income that will last for years to come by joining Dr. Wallach's crusade, spreading his message of better health. To learn more, visit radio.recordedvideo.com. That's radio.recordedvideo.com, radio.recordedvideo.com, or call 866-257-3105 for a recorded message. Did you know your car can be hacked just like your computer or phone? Hackers can hijack the signal of your own key fob to burglarize your vehicle in seconds. The Black Hole Faraday Key Fob Bag is a signal and penetrable shield that stops these hacks in their tracks. Protect one of your most valuable assets. Go to HackProofBag.com. That's HackProofBag.com. And use promo code RADIO to get 20% off. Or call 805-222-4584. 805-222-4584. Will the government protect your family from Iran and North Korea's newest weapon, EMP? We buy guns to protect ourselves. Home, health, and car insurance for accidents. Maybe you also have food storage. But how would you keep your refrigerator running in a long-term EMP blackout? Using tested military designs, the Solark EMP-hardened solar generator protects and powers your critical appliances for years without burying items underground or wrapping them in aluminum foil. Unlike other preps, Solark is used every day to help offset your electric bill automatically. Visit PortableSolarLLC.com to learn how easily expandable the system is. Solark is the most affordable and powerful solution on the market. The whole system even fits in the back of a pickup or SUV and can install in less than an hour. See for yourself why Solark beats other off-grid systems at PortableSolarLLC.com. Don't wait for the government. Go to PortableSolarLLC.com to learn why Solark is energy insurance for your family. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. Injury help desk is responsible for this advertisement. Principal office, Las Vegas, Nevada. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisements. Services may not be available in all states. Attention heartburn drug users. If you or a loved one has taken Nexium, Prevacid, or Prilosec to treat heartburn, acid reflux, or indigestion, and suffered serious kidney damage, chronic kidney disease, or kidney failure, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Studies from the JAMA Internal Medicine indicate a significant increased risk of acute and chronic kidney disease from taking proton pump inhibitors. 
inhibitors. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with kidney failure or chronic kidney disease after taking Nexium, Prevacid, or Prilosec to treat heartburn, acid reflux, or indigestion, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Act now. Time is limited to file a claim. For a free consultation and free information, call Injury Help Desk now. You may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-225-8944. That's 800-225-8944. Again, 800-225-8944. Call now. For P150, P150 GA, P150 NY, P150 OK, P150 TN, C250 A, C250 E, C250 Q. Not available in all states. If New York or Colorado, call for a similar offer. What's the scariest thing about going to the dentist? Opening your mouth or opening your wallet? Because just a simple cleaning can cost $100, and things like root canals can cost you hundreds more. If you don't have dental insurance to help, call Physicians Mutual Insurance Company, 1-800-656-4939. This isn't a discount plan or preventive-only coverage. This is real dental insurance that helps pay for checkups right away. So you can call today and get your teeth cleaned tomorrow. Plus, it helps cover the more expensive procedures you might need down the road. Fillings, crowns, bridges, even costly dentures. There's no deductible and no annual maximum. Your acceptance is guaranteed for one of these insurance policies, even if you're retired. There are no networks, so you can choose any dentist you'd like. Call now for a free information kit with all the details. 1-800-656-4939. That's 1-800-656. 1-800-656-4939 Hey, this is Marie D. Jones, the author of This Book is from the Future, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. On the Paracast with Gene Steinberg, Chris O'Brien is, I think, still suffering from the impact of his trip to Thailand. We've got Jan Harzan of MUFON really having an entertaining conversation just back and forth about what we may or may not know about UFOs, about the possibility of disclosure, what we know about the UFOs themselves, which we'll get more into in a moment and some of your questions from the Paracast forums. But let me tell you first about the Paracast Plus because we've made it bigger, better than ever and cheaper than ever. Go to plus, P-L-U-S dot the com. What do we offer you? We offer you the ad-free version of the show. We eliminate the commercials. We also offer the after the Paracast podcast. We offer a growing video channel, special interviews from researcher, documentarian, Paul Kimball. Lots of good stuff. Plus dot the com. Prices start at four ninety nine, same price as MUFON per month. Well, obviously, we can't predict what our technology is going to be. We can only guess. I mean, we guessed in Star Trek in the 1960s what technology would be like in the 23rd century. But we already have some of that technology now. You know, and we're talking, at least scientists are talking about the possibilities of some kind of faster than light travel or a warp drive and some way to transport matter like the transporter. And we have the flip phones and we have the tricorders, which could be an Apple Watch or an iPhone or something like that. So a lot of what we predicted for the far future is here now. And isn't that part of the problem, too, in predicting the future? We can only look at what we have now. And imagine what it would be. But it looks like with Star Trek, especially with all the impact it had on society, you know, we're doing it 200 years ahead of what they suspected. I think it's because we're on an exponential curve (laughs) from a technology standpoint. Yeah, I agree. I don't know what it's going to be like. And that's why we can't predict what E.T. would be like. Now, the other question here, if UFOs are known to the U.S. government, they have guilty knowledge of what's going on. How or is it shared with other countries or can they even get that genie back in the bottle? Well, I I don't know how much is shared, uh, but I do believe that, that there it is shared with certain governments. I don't as far as getting it back in the bottle, I think it's just a matter of I, I, I do believe there's probably some form of I, I just have to believe there's some form of plan for how we can let this thing out and, and bring us back on a timeline that that, that, that merges again. Um, I think that timeline is that there are a number of scientists and engineers currently who are working in the white world. I call it the white world as opposed to the black world, uh, which is the black world funded by uh, secret government programs. Uh, 
who are working on faster than light travel and what that would mean for mankind. I had the opportunity to recently attend a workshop with uh, 29, 30 of these uh, scientists and engineers up at Estes Park, Colorado, and uh, where they basically spent their time presenting to each other on the different things they're working on, uh, all revolving around uh, Einstein's theory of relativity, uh, the Maxwell equations and different things, trying to figure out what the breakthrough is that allow us to, to travel out to the stars. So um, eventually we're going we're gonna to bust that one open and it's going to be it's going to be well known. One of the scientists there um, shared with me that, uh, because I said to him, I said, you know, I had this conversation with Ben Rich back in 93, where he basically said, we have the technology to take ET home. We have, we can travel to the stars and it won't take us our lifetime to do it. So somewhere this has already been done. I said, wouldn't it make sense to go find those things? And what I was told uh, was two things. One is that when these black projects are completed uh, and they're over, all the records for them get destroyed except for two copies, and those are put in separate vaults. But no one ever gets to see the copies of the final reports. So uh, basically, it's almost impossible to transfer technology out of the black world into the white world where it could be used for our betterment, the you know mankind's betterment. Um, the other thing that he shared with me was that they're getting hints from the intelligence community on where to go look. But it's kind of like, go look under that rock and see if you can see, find anything. But, but they're not giving them enough hints to be able to make the, the, the final breakthrough. I mean, they'll, they'll make the breakthrough eventually, just because we always do. But uh, they're getting hints, but they're not getting all the facts that they need to like, make it happen today. I think this is being done for a very specific reason. One is they are doing it to help get this announced and get it into the white world with the belief being that we invented it ourselves. In other words, it didn't come out of some black project. It was something, oh, scientist A or B, you know, discovered this thing. And because of that great discovery, we all of a sudden could travel to the stars. I mean, that's the way it'll be played out. And that's the way the, the public will come to believe it. Uh, so happen. the technology is handed out to us slowly by ET. Is that what you're suggesting? That almost takes us back to Philip Corso. Obviously, the day after Roswell was highly disputed, and of course, the book was heavily edited from the original manuscript. But he right. said, and it could be just a metaphor for what really happened, that he was the bag man bringing alien technology into private industry. And even that may just be a basic concept that he did that, but he didn't tell you what kind of technology. He only tells you it's night vision goggles. Right. Um, well, yeah. So backing up a little bit here, um, I wasn't trying to say that extraterrestrials gave us the technology, although that's probably two steps back. What I was trying to say is that, that you've got people on these black projects who have the technology. My suspicion is they got it from extraterrestrials. I mean, that would make sense if we've had crash saucers and things we've recovered and back engineered. And through the help of people like Colonel Corso, where they took that foreign technology, which is what they call it, and gave it to corporations like AT&T, IBM, and others to go play with and figure out how does this substrate work or what does it do? What is this What does this beam or line of light do? Uh, and then develop out of that things like, you know, uh, fiber optics and, and other technologies. Um, I do believe that that's the case. But in the case of what I was talking about with this group of scientists at Estes Park, they're basically being pointed in the direction to go look by the intelligence community go look under this rock and you will maybe you'll find something of interest you know so they're being prodded along but they're not being told enough that uh, they're they're not going to be given the answer and i think the reason they're not going to be given the answer is because they want these scientists to discover this on their own so they can say oh this was a great discovery by so and so and the public will believe just like the transistor where'd the transistor come from who who thought up the transistor well, we I have an historical age. record. The point is here, you can go to Wikipedia yeah. and look up invention of the transistor and see a very specific record of patents and research that led you there. But isn't it also possible for that record to be altered later on after the fact? Well, I don't think the record was altered. I'm not trying to say that. But what I'm saying is perhaps that person who discovered it was prodded along by somebody who had the, you know, in the intelligence community, if we found these transistors or whatever on a craft or something 
it could have been implanted and, or, or they could have been pushed, prodded along to, to come to the discovery of, oh, my gosh, if I do this, I, I get that. And so um, I'm just saying it's a possibility and it's a smart way to do it because what you can then do is you can begin to diverge this, this black world with the white world. So at some point in the future, whether it's 10 years out, 50 years out, 100 years out, the two come back together. Because if all of a sudden we start having interstellar travel, uh, it's not going to be too long before we start running into other people out in the universe. I mean, if there's somebody out there, which there definitely is, in my opinion, uh, and you've got the ability to travel interstellar, you're, you're going to run into these other beings. Well, we have to see how that happens. In the meantime, let me tell you, listeners, again, before we go to our next segment, that we have the Paracast Plus, and we're offering it for $4.99 a month. You can also subscribe for the year, five years or lifetime. And for five years and lifetime subscriptions, we got free eBooks that we'll be sending out. So you get a real special deal there. You get the commercial free version of the show after the Paracast, all sorts of extra content. And the way to do it is to go to plus.theparacast.com, P-L-U-S dot theparacast.com. Jan Harzan is here. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. Today, living in the United States means that your online privacy is at risk. Regaining that privacy means going abroad. Privacy Abroad offers secure online privacy because our servers are located in Switzerland, a safe haven for digital communications. As a law-abiding citizen, you have nothing to hide, but you certainly have something to lose. Regain your Fourth Amendment rights and your peace of mind. Go to patriot.privacyabroad.com now. That's patriot.privacyabroad.com. This is Ben Gordon, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, Power Swabs is the answer. In five minutes, you'll see two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. There's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes, and you're done. To try Power Swabs, call 1-800-290-8480. Your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free. 1-800-290-8480. That's 1-800-290-8480. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I'm here to tell you about GCNTelecare.com, a team of board-certified doctors assisting you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Within 15 minutes of registration, care your family can afford. Revolutionizing the healthcare industry, virtual consulting, providing diagnosis of non-emergency medical issues by phone or secure video on computer or smart mobile devices. GCNTelecare.com, virtual care anywhere. All right, guys, we're ready for our Four Seasons sunroom, and Daddy's going to get a rec room with refreshments. Oh, no, we'll be sleeping under the stars. Mom, what about the one with, you know, the fun? Nice try, little bro. It's a gym, my gym. Hey, Grandma's getting her Four Seasons garden room, weather tight and still like being outdoors. Maybe a living room. Oh, no, wait, a family hub. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what the budget, the season, or the climate, Four Seasons Sunrooms let you and your family enjoy the outdoors inside. Call now to hear more about these great offers from the premier manufacturer of sunrooms since 1975. More reasons for four seasons now. 
To find out more, call toll-free 800-848-6333. That's 800-848-6333. Why be held hostage by your wireless carrier for two years? What if there were no contracts, no activation fees, no tracking, tracing, or draconian gimmicks? All on America's largest 4G LTE networks. Introducing PixWireless.com. Activate your Sprint, AT&T, and unlock GSM phones instantly. Bring your own device and make the switch today. Here's how. Call or click 1-800-205-9513 or PixWireless.com. Spell P-I-X. PixWireless.com. This is Micah Hanks of the Gray Alien Report, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We're having a very enjoyable conversation here about what we might know about ET technology, how it might be filtered into private industry. On the other hand, isn't it just as possible that all this was invented by smart earthlings? <laughs> I hardly think so, but that's a, <laughs> that's just my personal opinion. I think, well, certainly, you, you know, if you look at people like Tesla, uh, a lot of these very, very smart people, Einstein, a lot of their stuff came to them through dreams. So you have to ask, you know, through uh, other means. It wasn't something that they just sat there on a blackboard one day and drew up themselves. They were kind of shown the way, if you will. So you have to ask yourself, how does that all work? Maybe it has an extraterrestrial background. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it has a spiritual background, maybe it doesn't, but but basically it wasn't like they were so smart and they'd gone to school so long, they were so intelligent that they figured this out. Uh, a lot of these people didn't even have college educations. I mean, they just, I mean, Tesla, I don't believe, had a college education. I mean, he just, he just came up with these ideas on how to transmit power through the air. Some of that's being used today, in fact. I mean, Samsung just came out with its wireless charger. You just put your phone down on the table and it charges itself. There's no wires to plug in. You know what? That's not unusual because there still are sensors. I was playing with a wireless charging device, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. We had interviews on it on my tech show, the Tech Night Out Live, before there were smartphones. Right. So it's not something that's terribly unusual. Again, you know, this is something where we really don't know. We can just as well say, okay, we invented it. We're smart people. We figured this out. Or we had a little bit of help. Right. And, but, the, but again, I don't know where the smoking gun exists for the latter. It's just speculative. No, I would, I would not disagree with you. Uh, but I'm just saying that the Samsung wireless charger is, is based, my understanding is based on the Tesla uh, patents that were done, you know, 100 years ago. So it's great that we're using that technology today. I'd love to see more of it used. But then is it possible that our experimentation with matter transportation, with possible warp drive ideas that was also fed to us? Well, it's certainly possible. I mean, from my point of view, what's important is that we make a good, peaceful use of it, uh, you know, to help our planet, to help our, 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 our humanity community uh, live better lives and, and have a much richer future for all of mankind. You know, the problem with most things that are technology-wise is the first thing that happens to them is they get weaponized, uh, and we start using them to kill each other. <laughs> and so I think it's time we kind of reverse that course, and we started saying, okay, a new technology has come along. Let's figure out how to make something good out of it uh, and, and put it to the betterment of all mankind, not just a few, and not to enslave mankind, but to free mankind. I mean, that's, that's, to me, that's the important part of the whole thing. Whether it came from extraterrestrials or didn't come from extraterrestrials, whether it came from some other place, um, I think that's what's important. Very, very briefly, we've talked about the theory of a breakaway civilization, one or more. There are several people who hold that. We know that Richard Dolan has talked about breakaway civilization. This is civilization. There are people on Earth who decided to go their own way. And that maybe the UFOs and maybe some of these great inventions are coming from them. What do you think? I think it's it's very possible. Uh, you know, back in the 30s and 40s and 50s, mostly the 40s, you had a group of individuals down in New Mexico, uh, Oppenheimer, Einstein, Edward Teller. These were brilliant minds of the day. And so let's just presuppose that perhaps they stumbled upon something uh, in the 
theory of relativity that Einstein had come up with that by tweaking this thing one way or the other way uh, could allow us to do time travel or could allow us to do some extraordinary things. I don't know whether they would have shared that with everybody. I, I don't know. I mean, Einstein had just seen his EMC equals MC squared turned into a nuclear bomb. I don't think that was his intent when he came up with that equation. But the military people took that and figured out how to build bombs out of it. I, I think it's very possible that someone in the very far past, uh, I'm going back now 80 years, 70 years, 60 years, could have come up with this and taken it underground and, and, and do it. There's, there's stories about the Nazis being down in the Antarctica, that, that, that some of the scientists took the technology they had with the Nazi bell and things and ended up these craft and flew them down there. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, but, but it's certainly possible. I, I think that we had a team of scientists in New Mexico back in the, in the 40s uh, who were developing uh, under the Manhattan Project, the late 30s, 40s, uh, Manhattan Project. They could have been they could have stumbled upon other things that that uh, I find it interesting that you have all these crashes in and around that area that all happened about the same time. What is a possibility? It was us developing some kind of time travel machines that, as they re-entered into our time zone, we didn't have the wherewithal at the time to to steer them properly, and so they kept crashing. I mean, there's a whole bunch of these crashes that all happened at the same place. Well, speaking of I crashes, we have, for example, Roswell. We also have Aztec, and I totally disbelieve Aztec. I think there's very little support for it. What do you think? I really can't talk about it. I, I, I don't know enough about the Aztec crash to be able to to debate it one way or the other. But you've got the San Antonio crash. You, you've got the San Augustine crash. I had spent some time in San Antonio. Paula Harrison invited me down there to meet with the witness, to go out on the ranch, to talk to him about his experience as a child with his buddy, um, to show me the metal that they had had, it gave us some chips we could go test the metal with uh, off of that. Um, obviously, something crashed there. Now, whether it was extraterrestrial or not, I don't know. Um, but it was something extraordinary. And the fact that the Army showed up and hauled it away, it took them a couple of weeks to get it loaded on a truck and get it out of there, uh, would say that the military had some... Whole, you know, some part to play in it, whether it was just recovering it and taking it back to be looked at, or whether it was a craft that had been an experimental type craft that had crashed and they were coming to retrieve it. I don't, I don't know, but we know that with all these different cases out there, that it seems to have been a hotbed back in the late '40s and uh, early '50s. Even at the Socorro landing back in '64. Now that's almost. 20 years later, 10, 20 years later. But that was an actual landing and then a take off again. But there's all this activity around this particular area. Now, you could say it's because it's our nuclear site and where we were testing nuclear bombs and things, and these ETs had an interest in coming and see, watching what we were doing. That's certainly a possibility as well. But I, I wouldn't say that it's impossible that we didn't come up with something ourselves and that many, many of these craft and things that were reported were actually our own experimental craft being tested. It's one hypothesis I should put out there. Well, it certainly is, and certainly looking at different possibilities. What about some of these other issues? And you raised one of them right here, which may be time travelers, maybe part of it. And not because we have all these time travel shows on TV now, like Timeless and DC's you know, Legends of Tomorrow, but we're so interested in time travel. Do you foresee that as any possibility? And what about the danger of screwing things up? <laughs> I, I think we may be on a loop, you know, like Groundhog Day. We're just going back and doing it over again. Um, well, I think time travel is probably a distinct possibility. Um, my own experiences with this, I was with a professor who was one of the professors. I can use his name. It's James Woodward. He wrote the book uh, uh, Interstellar Travel or Star. Let's see, Interstellar Travel, Stargates. I'll get the name of it here. It's, it's, I'll look it up. But basically, he wrote a book on how to do this stuff. I was in his lab, and he was sharing with me some experiments he'd been doing called Mox Principle, based on Mox Principle, where he's getting thrust out of basically where he shouldn't be getting any kind of inertia out of what he shouldn't be getting any from, based on a set of equations and things that he's been doing. Uh, but as we we're sitting there talking, he said to me, Jan, he says, you know, I think 100 years from now, he said, well, maybe even 20, 30 years from now, you'll be able to have a watch on your wrist. You'll be able to put in a place and a time, press a button, 
and your own personal wormhole will open up and you'll be able to step through to that place in time. Now, this this is a scientist who's not a UFO guy. He's just a physicist doing experimental physics in his lab up at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, he's written a book on uh, interstellar travel and, you know, star, and stargates, I think is what it's called. Uh, and he's just saying, based on what he sees in the physics of things, that this should be possible. So if he's seeing it as a possibility, certainly somewhere in, in the distant past, either we might have discovered this, some small fraction on this earth might have discovered this, or certainly advanced beings a thousand years, a million years more advanced than us have figured this out. So I think time travel is a distinct possibility. I think the theory with time travel is what makes it so crazy is that we have this paradox where what if you do something really minor to change something that changes the future? We can go into more of those implications in a moment with Jan Harzan of MUFON. Time travel. So fascinating. Gene Steinberg here. Gogs got caught in traffic and Chris is kind of waylaid this week. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. A lot can happen in six seconds. A rodeo ride, a dramatic basketball win, and the world record holder can solve a Rubik's Cube. Six seconds is how long it takes for an 18-wheeler traveling at a safe speed to come to a complete stop. And in those six seconds, that truck will travel the length of two football fields. So please, give them room. Never cut in front of a large truck for any reason. Our roads, our responsibility. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Continuing on time travel with Jan Harzan. So this is, of course, forms the basis of those DC comic shows, The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow, where they go back in time and they do something. And that changes everything. So that's always the danger here. Or is it a self-fulfilling prophecy that when you go back in time and change something, that's because you were supposed to do that? It brings up a very fascinating, a quite good question. I mean, who knows what the answer is, but physicists will tell you that time doesn't really exist. I mean, our, our concept of time, which is a very linear progression, uh, just doesn't exist. Um, also, time can loop on itself. So this is something that, frankly, makes my head hurt to think about. But essentially, yeah, you can go forward and backwards in time. Remote viewing, in some sense, is going forward in time, right? Because you're able to see events and uh, talk about them that haven't ha- happened yet. Here's a very crazy theory, you know, throw it out there for no reason other than it's crazy. And that is, 
maybe time manipulation is going on all the time, but we all have slightly different senses of reality and memories. Said so I may remember something one way. And somebody next to me remembers it totally different. And you sit there and argue, well, no, you're wrong. This is what happened. No, this is what happened. And maybe that's the problem. Because of manipulation of the timeline, we do have separate memories of things. Yeah, and that, that, that's another possibility is that there are multiple timelines. So going back to your original hypothesis is what happens if you go back and change something. Maybe all you do is you start a different timeline. Maybe it, it, the, the one that was there before is there, but you've got you're on a now you're on a different track uh, going then. I think it's highly probable. I, I think the universe is much stranger than we quite realize, honestly. And and this is just one piece of it. One day we'll figure it out and know how it all works. But until that day, it's going to just look very strange to us. And it may just be here that if our concept of time is not a solid fixed reality that what we encounter with ufos and everything else is also screwed up exactly there's this uh, hypothesis put forward by the uh, bank of america finance uh, guys who do research for their uh, stock part of the company where the high net worth individuals and they basically came out and within the last six months and made a statement that they think there's a 50 percent possibility or probability that we're living in a simulated reality. Well, and this is, you know, analysts from Bank of America saying this. Well, at a, at a gaming conference up in Northern California about eight weeks ago, Elon Musk was one of the panelists, and a reporter got up and asked the question. You know, these Bank of America analysts have said that this is a possibility. What's your thought about it? And Elon thought for a second. And again, this is all on YouTube. You can watch it yourself. Uh, and he said, well, I think there's a one in one billionth chance that we're not in a simulated reality. Now, that was his answer. Basically, what he's saying is it's 100 percent certain that we're in a simulated reality. Nothing that we're seeing or doing in our lives is is real. We're all part of like a big computer game. Now, that, that's pretty mind blowing to have a guy of his stature make that statement. I don't personally agree with it, but maybe that's just because I don't want to believe it, <laughs> you know, but. Oh, that's really interesting there. Well, it makes you think, what a concept. It makes you think, yeah, it makes you think, you know, uh, what is reality? How does it get constructed? I'd like to believe that we, from a consciousness standpoint, give input to our reality and how it gets created. I'm not so excited about the idea uh, that this is all simulated and there's somebody else at the controls and I'm just a part, I'm just a computer game part in this this virtual 3D reality game. Uh, but, I mean, again, that's been hypothesized by these Bank of America analysts and it uh, was, you know, basically reaffirmed in a much stronger way by Elon Musk, who I think is probably one of the greatest minds of our, our current time although there are a lot of detractors to him as well. But I, I think anytime someone's trying to do something, take man to Mars, build electric cars, get the world to go solar so we're not using coal for energy, I think that's a great thing. If only we can get our reality straight. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> only on the Paracast could you get the, your reality straight. So. I don't even know if we can do it here. Don't get me started. <laughs> Let's kind of go back to MUFON because we can speculate on this all day. And MUFON was started, what, 1969, am I correct? That's correct. Okay, all those years, what do you think you've learned about what's going on? Well, I think we've learned several things. The first thing we've learned is that, number one, UFOs are real. They're intelligently controlled devices operating in and about our planet under the direction of intelligence, whether it's remotely done or uh, the intelligence is on board. So. UFOs are real. There's no, there's no debate about whether UFOs exist or not. They, they clearly exist. And there's an intelligence behind them. So that takes you to the next step, which is who is that intelligence and what are they doing? Now, that's a whole different ballgame in terms of figuring that out. Number two, I, I think we definitely understand that the technology that these craft display and these beings display, uh, we're talking now about telepathy and the ability to move things with mind and uh, psychokinesis and other types of things, that, that 
the technologies, if understood and put to peaceful uses on this planet, could have extraordinarily positive implications for mankind. I think that's the second thing we get out of what we see in the data. And the third thing is, absolutely, we need to make it safe for our scientists and engineers to be able to look into this subject and to study it uh, intelligently and, and, and in depth so that we can make these breakthroughs. I mean, our biggest inhibitor today is the laugh factor that's been generated or created by our intelligence and military community because they don't want people looking in this direction. Uh, they want to do everything they can to discourage it, uh, to make fun of it, to ruin people's lives, who even try to suggest that it's something there. Uh, and it's time that stops and that we take, take charge as a, a human race and we say, hey, this is important stuff. We need to understand this and we need our best and our brightest looking into it. So those three things. UFOs are real. Uh, they're intelligently controlled. There's technology that's significant to us if we put it uh, our minds to figure out how it works and putting it to peaceful use. And we need to make it safe for our scientists and engineers and others to study this without fear of retribution in their jobs, without fear of you know uh, being murdered, or threatened, uh, or made fun of. All right. This is what findings you have. To what extent can you prove this to a mainstream scientist? Well, I think when you're able to sit down with them and take them through the hard data. See, this is what I did when I first got in charge of MUFON. We spent an awful lot of time talking about IFOs. And yeah, 90% of our cases are probably IFOs. If you're really deep, dig deep into them, we can identify what's there. Uh, but uh, what's important is the signal. Forget about all the noise. Go to the signal. The signal is very strong that these are structured craft coming from someplace else with extraordinary technology in them. And if you can get people to look at those type of cases, uh, cases like 74282 in our database of a craft that was seen in, in northern Canada in 2013 by the CEO of a major, well, I say major, of, of a defense contractor uh, company and a couple of his buddies who he'd taken bear hunting up there into northern Canada – I mean, it is clear that there was something that they observed which was extraordinary, and they were able to capture it on video. Now, the video image got wiped because of the electromagnetic signal, but they were able to capture the electromagnetic signature of the craft, and based on that, he was able to ascertain, and you can read this on our website. It's all free. You can look at it. Uh, you can ascertain that it was used to super-rotating, counter-rotating electromagnets uh, that were causing this craft to, to propel itself, to levitate itself, to move. And he actually witnessed it moving at 25,000 miles an hour. Now, how do you know that? Well, because in the blink of an eye, it went from where it was from him, a few hundred feet away, to a mountain range, which was 25 miles away. Well, you know, you figure if it, that was a five-second trip, and it went 25 miles, you can figure out how fast it was going. Let's do our break here. Jan Harzan joining Gene Steinberg. He's from MUFON. I'm from a certain radio show. You're in the Paracast. The award-winning graphic converter, the universal genius for photo editing on your Mac. Join over one and a half million loyal users for this Swiss Army Knife photo editing app. It gives you all you expect from a top flight image editing app with tons of features and most important, it's easy to use. Get 20% off from lemkesoft.de slash gene. That's L-E-M-K-E soft.de slash gene. As you know, neighbors, web hosting can be pretty cheap, but not all hosting is the same. DreamHost wins best of awards year after year. You get unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, and even the low-cost plans put your sites on high-performance SSDs. Want to know more about what DreamHost has to offer? Go to technightowl.com slash host. Once again, that's technightowl.com slash host. 
Individuals and businesses with tax problems listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow Allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-615-7709. That's 800-615-7709. 800-615-7709. Looking for that edge during those intimate moments? We see many ads for enhancement, but the side effects include death. At GCN Team, we should change the Healthy Body Brain and Heart Pack to the Healthy Libido Pack. The brain and heart are not the only organs that require a healthy vascular system. For proper blood flow at the right moment, go to GCNTeam.com or call 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. Hello? Congratulations. For what? For losing all that weight. How'd you do it so fast? ASAP. ASAP what? What's that mean? Are you ready to get as skinny as possible, as soon as possible, as simple as possible, and as sexy as possible? I'm listening. Then get with the ASAP program. It's real and it works. No smooth talk, no slick advertising, and no exaggerated claims of success. I've got to know more. Welcome to ASAP, as slim as possible. Whether you have 10, 20, or 50 pounds to lose, ASAP is your weight loss answer. ASAP targets the abnormal fat reserves and makes them available to be burned as fuel and contains no caffeine or hormones. Order ASAP at wholesale prices or join the team to share the business with others. Go to GCNteam.com or call 855-GCN-MALL. That's 855-426-6255. GCNteam.com or 855-426-6255. Lose weight and look great with ASAP, as slim as possible. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. We have three more segments, and I'm having a lot of fun here talking to Jan Harzan, and we're looking over what he considers to be the solid evidence. Now, what if we're perceiving this all wrong? We're not seeing the actual events. What we measure can't be correct because we're not seeing what's really going on. Does that drive a little bit of a hole or cause a leak in the evidence? I'm not sure I'm following what you're trying to say. Can you, can you say it a different way? Well, okay. So we see a UFO and it appears to be flying at a certain rate of speed. But as ah. I said before, what if this is a phenomenon that's so alien to us that our minds at the subconscious level have to make it real and practical in the way we understand things. So if we're not seeing the actual event in the way it's occurring, how do we measure what it does? That's a good point. I mean, how do you know, right? And so all you can do is take what you've seen and, and, and process that. Uh, I mean, there is a hypothesis out there that says that, that this is all simulated and we're basically being given what we might call like a theater show, if you will. In other words, they're creating this in our minds and we're really not seeing something physical. It's something that's all made up inside of our minds, basically a reality. So that's certainly a possibility. I I would like to believe that's not true, but that doesn't mean it isn't true. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to say you're right. It could possibly be that. So we have to make an assumption here. Your assumption will go on the point of reality. Well, it looks real, 
let's assume it is, and let's go on that basis, lacking any evidence otherwise. But over the years, we've seen UFOs differently, different shapes, different sizes, possible differences in the entities seen in connection with that. So, Right. Go ahead. All right. So is it the technology of the UFO knots, whoever, whatever they are, that's responsible, different civilizations, or our perceptual limitations? I don't know the answer, honestly, but I think, you know, if you look at what we've seen over the past 60, 70 years, uh, a lot of it is very consistent. I mean, we're seeing structured craft in our skies. Uh, these triangles, which mo- most people think are, are more of a recent phenomenon, actually aren't. We have cases back going back to the 30s of triangular-shaped craft being seen. Orbs, uh, although many of them are, are misidentified because they're Chinese lanterns or something else, but orbs do exist. I've witnessed one myself. I know, I know they're real. I know how to tell the difference between an orb and a uh, Chinese lantern. But these lights, you know, going back to the Foo Fighters of the early 40s, uh, back in World War II, these same balls of light that follow our, our airliners today, uh, we get reports occasionally of, of these and, and photographs of these balls of light following them. These are some kind of intelligence that, that uh, exists on this planet, whether it came from someplace else or it's always been here, uh, that we're, we're continuing to see over the same stretch of, of time, you know, the 70 years of the modern age of ufology. So... I don't know. I'd like to believe that, that, that we're seeing things in our own current state of reality as opposed to this is all made up and you're being fed this through some kind of a simulated environment. But that's me. But how do you account for the differences in the type of craft? How do you account I, oh, for the differences I, in the type of creatures? Just so many different varieties, just like I might have a Volkswagen and you have a Ford well, pickup truck. That's the difference. Yeah. So, so that's what I would say. I mean, I just take our own planet. You're driving down the freeway. How many cars do you see that are exactly alike? Unless they're Priuses, which seem to be everywhere. But- You're in L.A., of course. So everybody has a Prius where you live. But the other <laughs> thing is here, there's a phenomenon here, which is just psychological, that when yeah. you have a certain brand of car, you see more of them on the road. Yeah, that's true. It, yeah, it's called synchronicity, I think. I mean, it's, it's where you, because you're aware of it, you, you start noticing it. It's like I'll see a word for the first time used, and the next thing I know, I'm seeing it everywhere I, I read as a, that word shows up. So, um, but I was just saying, you know, that, that, that these different shapes and sizes of craft, I just look at how many different car companies are there on, on, on our planet and how many different styles of car, even within one car company, the Ford Motor Company, they have got, you know, 12 different kinds of cars. And it might be the same way in, in these spacecraft. Of course, if you're coming from multiple civilizations, it wouldn't be normal that. Uh, two different civilizations would have built the exact same looking type craft. Um, and then within those craft, why wouldn't you have a sport model and a, and a, a battle cruiser and a, and a landing craft? And a, I mean, you would expect to see different kinds of things. So I don't see anything too unusual in that. And we do see common shapes. I mean, we see, you know, triangular shapes. We see a disc shape, uh, egg shaped. Uh, the craft does come up quite a bit star shaped. And then also the beings. I mean, just look at if you took someone from Africa and put them next to someone from Europe, put them next next to someone from Asia. If you were from someplace else, you might think they're all they're all different, that they really don't have anything in common. Yet they're all human beings. Right. I we have all a, sizes and everything else. And we have fat people and we have thin people. We can go into yeah, we got, point taken. Got, OK, let me ask you about some of the anomalous stuff, like, for example, the 1897 airships. Yes. Dirigible type things. Now, we were testing dirigible type craft during the 19th century. So is it possible some of these stories, not, of course, the ones that obviously were made up by newspapers trying to gain circulation, but the stuff that's still out there, maybe that was it. It was just somebody inventing something and doing a test flight. Well, I just don't think you'd get a newspaper to write something that they didn't feel was true because it would, it would, it would, it would impact their credibility with, you got to realize communities back in those days were very small. Everybody knew everybody else. So if you were going to put something out that wasn't, wasn't true, it wouldn't take long for the people in the, in the community to know that that was a falsehood and that you were perpetrating it. And they would pretty much lose faith in you as an individual or you as a company or you as a, 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 a 
publishing house. So I think it's probably not likely that that was the case. Um, now, could things be misidentified? Yeah, I mean, could there be a dirigible and someone saw a dirigible and they they had never seen one before, so therefore they thought it was a flying saucer from someplace else? That's possible. But I don't even think back in those days that the dirigibles existed. I, I, don't, I think the balloons came along much later than that. Uh, we, I think we had balloons, but we didn't have actual dirigibles. I'd have to go look at the research on that, but I believe that's the case. And then, of course, um, why would you take the time to go bury a body and put a marker on it that has that kind of information? Uh, I, I just don't see it being that, fu- that funny. I mean, again, these communities are very small. My, my mother-in-law grew up in a community of less than 500 people in Swatch, Colorado, which is in the San Luis Valley. Uh, it's where she met her husband and married him, and they had my wife. But it was a very tiny community, and we went back and visited it. They, they have the distinction of having the, the world's, at least the United States' only uh, printing press that's the old typeset kind, and they publish a weekly newspaper and send it out to all the people who've lived there, past and present, who have pay for a subscription to it. But, I mean, you look at that tiny of a community, everybody knows each other. It, it, everybody's business is well known. Um, I don't know what what guffaw they would get out of uh, making something like this up, and tr- because they're not tricking anybody, they, everybody knows everybody else. So, I, I just think it's highly unlikely that that happened. We have Gene Steinberg. We have a late arrival, Gogs Mackay. We have Jan Harzan of Mufon. You're in the podcast. <laughs> for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blocket Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Why be held hostage by your wireless carrier for two years? What if there were no contracts, no activation fees, no tracking, tracing, or draconian gimmicks? All on America's largest 4G LTE networks. Introducing PixWireless.com. Activate your Sprint, AT&T, and unlock GSM phones instantly. Bring your own device and make the switch today. Here's how. Call or click 1-800-205-9513 or PixWireless.com. Spell P-I-X. PixWireless.com. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. Are you happy washing your hands with harsh chemicals? Are you happy doing laundry with detergents? Are you happy paying high prices? Find your happiness with Pure Soap. These all-natural, earth-friendly Pure Soaps are the very best you've ever used. Buy in bulk. Get a 12, 36, or 48-month supply. Or get items individually and still save big. You're getting soap products twice as good as what you're using now. Earth-friendly and natural soaps. Your family deserves the best. Happiness is 5starsoap.com. Why not put your money up the drain for a change? 
See them at 5starsoap.com or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. Cal Bend Soap Company can save you thousands of dollars and give you good old-fashioned real soaps that are triple concentrated. Soaps made from vegetable and coconut oils. See their full selection of soaps at 5starsoap.com. That's F-I-V-E starsoap.com or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. Attention small business owners. Want to save money on your employee health insurance plan? Learn the little-known solution that could save thousands of dollars on your health insurance benefits and save your employees money, too. Call Health Markets for a free consultation, and one of our 3,000 local agents will show you how to make health care reform work for you. We'll design customized solutions for your business that can lower health care costs for you and your employees. We'll work directly with you to determine your needs. We search thousands of health plans from over 180 health insurance companies nationwide. You'll also find out if tax credits could save you money. Best of all, the service is free of charge. See why Health Markets has enrolled Americans in more than 2 million insurance policies. You don't have to wait for open enrollment to lower your cost. Call now. Find out how much you and your employees could be saving. Representatives are standing by to assist you. Call 800-930-5137. That's 800-930-5137. 800-930-5137. Hi, it's Grant Cameron from presidentialufo.com. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. So, Gogs Mackay finally showed up. Were you stuck in traffic or something? Well, I was stuck with work, but out in the, the kind of Grampian Highlands, um, near where the Queen has her kind of summer residence, and there's no signal up in that area for a lot of things, so just couldn't be helped. You're here now, and we have Jan yeah. Harzan. So, Jan, meet Gogs. Hi, Gogs. Yeah, uh, I was stuck out the road in an area of no signal and um, in the kind of northeast highlands. Uh, just for work, couldn't be helped, but um, glad to be here and uh, see uh, meet Jan Harzan for the first time. Hi, Jan. How you doing? Good to meet you as well. Now, we, we don't want to cover ground we've already covered, but maybe you want to ask a couple of questions of Jan to further the yeah. discussion, like I said, we've gone through disclosure, we've gone through uh, technology, we've gone through Roswell, what the government may or may not know, that yeah. kind of thing. But what would you like to ask? I've got something. Well, I was going to uh, ask Jan what we were talking about with Bob the other night. How, how, what is MUFON, what could, can MUFON be doing to get more younger people interested in UFOs? Well, I think the one thing we could do is to transform some of the things we're currently doing. Uh, we just uh, revamped our MUFON journal after probably 30 years of uh, putting out in a certain uh, format. And we think that's going to appeal well to kids who like to look at things on their phones or on their, their tablets. Um, it's a much, much easier to read document. It has all the same information in it. It's just completely been redone uh, using a professional uh, publishing house. And then... Um, I think we need to uh, get them excited, get them educated about this. Because what I find when I talk on school campuses uh, about this subject is there's a total ignorance about the historical, uh, what has happened in this field. And I think even though they'll all say, absolutely, extraterrestrials must exist, they have no background in what's going on on a daily basis on this planet. It's, just, it's so well hidden from them. And then, of course, they do everything on their phone, right? It's all done through... Instagram and Twitter and uh, to a lesser extent Facebook for many of them these days. That seems to be now grandma's uh, playground for keeping track of the grandkids. But, uh, you know, we have to talk to them at their level and uh, using their technology and uh, make it exciting for them. Because, I mean, this what could be more exciting than dealing with people from out there? John, John, I'm sure you've noticed yourself like over the last few years, the preponderance of paranormal themed TV shows, reality shows, most with a kind of ghost um, slant to them. Uh, what do you think about the fact that maybe if if a UFO conference kind of you more aim at uh, 
a wider paranormal kind of uh, catchment in terms of let's 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 get the people who are maybe are just interested in watching stuff about ghosts and ghost hunting on TV and get them kind of maybe into ufology sideways because there's a huge captive audience for these paranormal shows, the ghost ones on TV. And there are lots of young viewers who do watch this kind of stuff on YouTube, uh, maybe on terrestrial TV as well. And these younger people who like would not be going to a UFO conference, maybe don't listen to shows like the Paracast, but I think they could probably get into it. And sometimes I wonder as well with young people today, because of the like the the idea, the meme of a of a grey alien and stuff. All for the last forty years, a lot of people got into ufology because it's like. Is it real? Are UFOs real? This kind of finding out. And I think maybe millennials, people born, you know, in the last 20 years, they're almost from day one accepting that, you know, there is extraterrestrial life. So to them, it's maybe not such a process of discovery and will we find out the answer or not. I think maybe a lot of young people are not kind of outwardly interested, but they've already kind of accepted it you know, the, the, the UFO reality already, so they don't see the point in kind of wasting time trying to prove something they think exists already. I would agree, I would agree with you. I think I think that's exactly where they are. I mean, you, you watch television and you, you, you know, I think that they're, they're like, of course, there's probably other people out there. I don't even think they give it a second thought, you know, going back 60 plus years ago in World War II, I mean, we, we lived in the Mayberry RFD kind of an era where, where, uh, People were just basically struggling to survive. I, I think the other thing, too, is the kids today uh, don't have, for better or for worse, they don't have to struggle like our parents did to make ends meet. Or maybe even many of us had to struggle to to get through life. Uh, they're born into a time where, where things are much easier for them, where information is fully free-flowing for them where there's opportunities for them now maybe not as much anymore but but you know that they're 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 able to see this stuff and process it much quicker and i think kids are growing up much faster today i think you know a 13 14 15 year old kid today uh is eons ahead of where a 14 15 year old kid was 30 40 years ago so um i think i think they're open to the possibility i don't think they're going to spend a whole lot of time worrying about it one way or the other um, the question is, how do we engage them and get them to be uh, actively involved in it, uh, as many of us are? I suppose another point to think of is that, to say, young people 30, 40, 50 years ago, the the kind of uh, any photos or film footage they were exposed to of UFOs, probably very little of that was uh, out and outright hoaxes um, or you know maybe some are but they didn't know but but these days I would imagine that anyone kind of giving a casual glance onto YouTube or whatever or typing UFO into Google whatever uh, probably 95 percent of what they will see easily is all fake stuff. CGI created by these, I'm not going to name them, but there are certain channels on YouTube that just, you know, just almost fully carry very well done but hoax videos trying to make off that they're real. And I can imagine that people now maybe a bit disheartened by um, just all this fakery out there. I think probably in the early 70s, say, if you bought a UFO book, the photos in it, probably none of them were deliberate hoaxes, maybe misidentification. But now most of the stuff, visual media out there is outright fake. Yeah, I mean, we, we get that. But, uh, you know, honestly, uh, of all of our cases, you know, maybe 10,000 cases a year, we get only two or three or maybe 4% are, are when we really investigate them turn out to be hoaxes and, and not all of those have video or photos attached to it. So, yeah, the good news is that these digital cameras do actually capture a lot of the information. And so when you look at the exit data on some of these photographs, you can see that although the person may allege that the three photos were taken within minutes of each other, you can see one was taken on a different day. Um, so it pretty much blows that story out of the water. We do our best to, to kind of call through that stuff and try to check on it, make sure it's what's being purported to be true. 
And if it's not purported to be, if it's not true, what's being told is we we question why are you telling us something that's not true and go back to uh, confront the witness. So we're doing our best as an organization to keep as much of the fakery out of the equation. Unfortunately, most other people don't do that. They they post things on their sites. They uh, they're looking for the latest viral video that they can go make money off of YouTube ads. And uh, there's not a whole lot of vetting of uh, that kind of information. So I think that's one of the ways where MUFON is different, uh, where we're trying to set ourselves apart, not to be haughty about it, but, but I mean, it's important that when you're talking about such an important subject that you know you're talking factually about it to the greatest extent that you can. And Gene and I have already talked about, well, how do you know you're not being part of a greater simulated reality or that we're just it's the way we perceive things. But in factuality, we, we do see... Uh, structured craft. We do see these orbs. We do see these large triangles, and they're being reported all over the place by very credible people. So we know something's going on. We have Gox Mackay, late arrival for reasons that we accept. We accept his excuse. We have Jan Harzan of MUFON at MUFON.com, by the way, if you want to check it out. He'll give you more information about being a member in our next segment. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the podcast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive PowerCast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items. And entails t-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the PowerCast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of t-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.thepowercast.com, store.thepowercast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great t-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children. Stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the PowerCast. If you go to store.thepowercast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. We use cell phones against our heads every day. But now, a landmark U.S. government study confirms increased health risks from exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The time to protect yourself is now. The solution is Defender Shield. Proudly made in the USA, Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation emitted from cell phones, tablets, and laptops. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. Use discount code DEFENDER for 10% off. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in EMF radiation protection. This is Ben Gordon, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, Power Swabs is the answer. In five minutes, you'll see two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. There's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes, and you're done. To try Power Swabs, call 1-800-290-8480. Your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free. 1-800-290-8480. That's 1-800-290-8480. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I'm here to tell you about GCNTelecare.com, a team of board-certified doctors assisting you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Within 15 minutes of registration, care your family can afford. Revolutionizing the healthcare industry, virtual consulting, providing diagnosis of non-emergency medical issues by phone or secure video on computer or smart mobile devices. GCNTelecare.com, virtual care anywhere. What would your life be like if you woke up each morning with new vitality, feeling better than you have in years, and you noticed a difference in your sleeping patterns, blood sugar levels, and had a sense of well-being overall? There's something that is changing thousands of people's lives, and you could be one of them. It's called Heart and Body Extract. Sharon Harris, co-creator of Heart and Body Extract, talks about the positive effects of Heart and Body Extract. What happens with the formula Heart and Body Extract is it's giving the body the necessary vitamins, minerals, amino acids, enzymes, and phytonutrients so so the body will heal itself. And yes, the body does have the ability to balance blood pressure, balance cholesterol, clean and unclog the arteries. It can also work on uh, balancing the circulation for diabetics. So the body is an amazing thing. It simply needs some help so it has the tools. 
supposed to heal itself. Heart and body extract gets results. To order your two-month supply, call now, toll-free at 866-295-5305. Order online at hbextract.com. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. This is Jacques Vallée, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. So it comes down to this really fast, breezy session with Jan Harzan of MUFON. Before we let him go today, he'll give you complete details on how you can become a member. As he says, it starts at four ninety nine a month, just like the Powercast Plus is four ninety nine a month, and I'll tell you what you get for that and what the options are in just a few moments. So, of course, get your pen, paper, iPad, iPhone, Mac, or PC to write the thing down. I wonder how many people out there actually write with pen and paper. I do. I still take old fashioned notes that ages me in ways that we can't. Jen, we kind of hit this before, and I didn't get into the second part of the question, which is about interviewing people and looking at their backgrounds. Have you taken time to see whether people who do report UFOs have had experiences of other things, ghosts, Bigfoot, other so-called paranormal events? It's not something that's part of the, the normal investigative process, but it generally does come up because what they'll say is, uh, I've had these other experiences I'd like to talk to you about. We try to, for the purposes of a given UFO report, keep it to that specific event. And then if they have multiple events, we'll try to do those as separate. Then we basically connect them so that we know that these events might be connected. The answer is, yeah, we look into it. When, when investigators are investigating a case, I presume you have kind of pre-printed forms for, you know, you know, information to be filled in. Do you ever record any information about any smells that people may experience? We had uh, Joshua Cutchin on the other week, who's done books in this kind of area, the paranormal and kind of smells. Is there anything in a move on investigation that takes account of smells? Well, only in the standpoint that if they want to tell about what we what we typically capture are the specs on the craft or the actual event that occurred in terms of you know s- shape size color sounds or there any kind of uh, superstructures on the craft uh, domes you know antenna other things uh, was it making any noise what type of noise was it making uh, were there any entities seen what did those entities look like what what did they say what did they do smell i don't believe is an, an actual question that we ask but it's certainly something that would be captured if the because if it was something that was extraordinary, the witness would say, you know, by the way, I had this smell. That would be captured in just the general text of the description of the sighting. But it's now, not a data point that we actually have called out that you click on here. It says there was a smell or wasn't a smell or the smell was the odor of sulfur. The smell was the odor of coal or whatever. That is not part of the actual database. Sure. But if, but if they did have something and they mentioned it it would get captured that way yeah but not to tell you how to do your work but because this is happening occasionally in connection with paranormal events wouldn't that be worth asking as a matter of course because people are not going to remember every detail yeah well it's certainly something we can look into it's not a difficult thing to create another data point for a database i might just go in there today after this call and just look and see how many people have ever put the word smell in there uh, and if it's a significant number of cases, here's one example. I mean, my director of research came to us the other day and said, we have this interesting case up in Canada, and it's shaped like a dumbbell, barbell, whatever you want to call it. It's It's got a ball at one end, a ball at the other, and it's connected by a, a handle. There's no data point that says under shape that says dumbbell or barbell. We only have a handful of cases. So out of 100,000 cases, we only have like three. Does it make sense to go put that in as a data point, or is, is it's already in there? in the narrative. So yeah, we can go look at that and I'll certainly make a note here to go explore that. 
Thank you for bringing it up. The sure. reason I mention this at all is because this may be the kind of detail that people may not even think of unless they are asked. And that might be the key thing here is to, when you devise your questionnaires, look at things that people mention and see, you know what, maybe we should be more proactive on this. Perhaps someone who is resolutely ETH nuts and bolts, they may think that it's maybe not quite such an important piece of information to get in an investigation. But if you're the type of person who thinks that maybe UFOs are partly a kind of strange paranormal phenomenon, along with other paranormal stuff like poltergeist or whatever, in those cases, if that is true or partly true, then sometimes maybe a, a smell could be very kind of important. And as, Jan, you mentioned yourself, the sulfur smell, and that does come up quite a lot in various paranormal kind of experiences. But are you resolutely, a, you know, an ETH, classic UFOs or alien spacecraft, or do you keep a bit of your mind open for it could be something even more strange than that, you know, interdimensional, spiritual, whatever? Yeah, no, I, I definitely have an open mind to what it could possibly be. I mean, I'm rooting for the extraterrestrial hypothesis, but what I tell people is, these craft could be from pretty much anywhere. I mean, they could be extraterrestrial craft visiting here. They could be time travelers. They could be uh, an indigenous species that's on this planet, living under the planet, in the planet. They could be people who are a phase shift, a frequency different than us. They could be interdimensional beings or creatures, craft. Uh, they could be demonic, spiritual. You know, so the one thing I will say is that it could be all of these things yeah. because they're not mutually exclusive. We're taking observations from human beings about things that they're seeing and witnessing. What they're seeing could be created by a number of different ways. I don't think it's any one answer. I think it's a lot of different answers. The ones I'm most interested in personally are the extraterrestrial because I believe that they have developed technology, if they're getting here, that would be very beneficial for us to use on this planet. I'm rooting more against the demonic because I'd rather not have <laughs> Satan run around running yeah. the planet, but... But I think, again, it's probably all of the above. And the, what I didn't even mention was, you know, top secret uh, craft from our own government uh, th that have been built. The other thing we didn't mention, of course, was UFO abductions. I'll just throw this out because we have to end this real soon. One of our popular paranormal bloggers is a fellow from Mexico, Red Pill Junkie is the name he uses. And he was comparing in a very lengthy article, and we published it in the Paracast newsletter. And that is the theory that Near-death experiences and UFO abductions have lots of commonalities. Now, I'm going to ask you very quickly because we don't have the time. Have you ever looked into that? Well, I, I think near-death experiences are, are another example that our understanding of our, of our universe and how it works and the physics behind it is, is woefully lacking. So absolutely, are they real? People are having these experiences. I don't believe it's brain oxygen starvation, which some in the medical community are trying to make it out to be. I've talked to too many people who have had these experiences. They're real. They tie back to real people, uh, real events, people long since deceased. So it just tells me that we live in a much stranger universe than we could ever imagine. Jan Harzan, tell our listeners, please, how they can learn more about MUFON and possibly become a member. Absolutely. I would invite everybody to go to our website, MUFON.com. Uh, on there, you can click on the Join Now button and just look at the offerings we have. We start at $4.99 a month for a basic membership, which gets you the MUFON Journal and a completely new generated members-only type website, which will have information for the public, but also more detailed, in-depth information for members. That'll be rolling out at the end of this month. Uh, you'll get your membership badge and some other little perks. Um, you can move up to the classic level at $14.99 a month, which includes the MUFON TV and a whole bunch of good swag. You can see the charts on there. And then finally to $24.99 a month for the VIP level, which uh, gives you a shirt, hat, cap, certificate, poster, and a whole bunch of other neat things. So we'd encourage you to come join us. Your funding uh, by joining MUFON helps us to continue the great work we're doing. And we appreciate each and every one of you who uh, do that. You can find us on Twitter. Look for The Paracast. Also take a gander at The Paracast on Facebook, where we have two a community, and the group, two Paracast areas. Also, we want to invite you to really show your support for the show 
by becoming a member of the Paracast Plus. Go to plus, P-L-U-S dot theparacast dot com. You get a commercial free version of this show. Better quality audio. You get the After the Paracast podcast, exclusive to Paracast Plus members, plus lots of other content. We've added material from our old friend Paul Kimball, More's Coming. It starts at just four ninety nine a month, our price cheap. And if you go for a year or five years or lifetime, it's even cheaper. And for long term subscriptions, we even give free ebooks. Lots of good stuff there. Go to plus.theparacast.com. Thank you, Gogs, for joining us as guest co host for the final two segments. Jan Harzan, yeah. thank you for joining us on the Paracast. Well, thank you for having me, Gene. It was great talking to you, gentlemen. Featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast.